Hey gang, Seabass here for the Ball Game Blitz on WNWS.com. Brought to you by Kaufman's Home Furnishings and Appliances. Kaufman's.com 2845 Highway 45 Bypass. By King Jewelers, 16B Conrad Drive right here in Jackson. By Umpy's Homemade Chicken and Biscuits, 745 Old Hickory Boulevard. By Fullington Team at Keller Williams. FullingtonTeam.kw.com, 731-298-9722, and by Jackson Madison County School System. Choose us. Call 731-345-7011 for a tour. JMCSS.org. Now, let's get right back to the action. And good evening and welcome to the Ball Game Blitz TV show produced by Worthy Road Studios on the Jackson Christian High School Facebook page. Of course, the pregame show is brought to you by Great American Sports. They'll also bring you the postgame show. And tonight, Michael Mullnix will be doing the color in place of David Wade. Dave will be back in the box next week. And, of course, your play-by-play -play man is Coach Joe Holloway. Somebody says, why do you put your last name in there? It's just Coach Joe is what they know me as. Anyway, this is a copyright broadcast of Worthy Road Studios for 2022. And it also means that any rebroadcast, retransmission, further use of this contest, including editing or anything else of the Ball Game Blitz TV show and the Jackson Christian football game is prohibited without the express, note the word express, written consent of Worthy Road Studios, strictly prohibited. Now, tonight, the Ball Game Blitz, this is what's so great about Worthy Road Studios and the Ball Game Blitz. They will have USJ, TCA, and Peabody football produced on each school's high school Facebook page. Uh, there will also be union basketball, volleyball, soccer, softball, baseball, and all of those come on either Union or the Ball Game Blitz. And Worthy Road Studios have these archived. They will be archived on YouTube of all the teams I've mentioned. Of course, the main man, the man with the talented hands is Gary Lockhart tonight. He produces, he directs, he's technical advisor. And of course, on the replay, Adrena Hicks. And uh, she is a whiz with that, has the magic hands as far as making those replays happen for you. Upstairs on the camera tonight, Vincent Lockhart. And, uh, yes, if the name sounds familiar, he's been with us before. Very talented young man in the first year. We have missed him, but he's back helping us out tonight. And, of course, the executive producer, the founder, owner, director, and also helps haul equipment. Paul Schultz is the main man. He's over in Memphis tonight. And all of our Ball Game Blitz TV show broadcasts are available to watch once we save them in high definition on Worthy Road Studios' YouTube channel. A lot of good things happening tonight and support our people that bring this possible to you. National Federation is going to rip you off for somewhere around $11.13, maybe higher than that when they give you that. This broadcast comes to you free because of the great people that sponsor these contests. Michael, a quick word, and then we're going to check the, the timing and everything out because this is senior night. That's right. This is one of the biggest weeks in high school football, that being the final week. Possibility of playoff contention this week with a bunch of teams. That's not the case with Jackson Christian, though. They've already clinched their spot. However, they're going to determine tonight who, what seed they're going to be. They're either going to be number two or number three, and we just have to wait to find out after this game is over with, Coach. And we see Michael Hodum of Fayette Academy, formerly played at Old Hickory Academy under the late Walter Kilzer. He's out there talking to the officials. Coach Darby Palmer has already talked to him, and they've had the meeting already. You see our young men about to finish their warm-ups. The Fayette Academy team has left the field because it's senior night, and uh, we will look at the schedule. It is supposed to start officially at 6.30, and Michael will be telling you about that. And it's the seniors from the cheerleading squad, the band, the golf, the football team, and uh, – fine young people. I've had a chance to work with just about all of them and of course they're going to have not only our camera work on that, they have something about them on the board out there. Michael will be giving you some information and then at 6.55 the captains will go to the 50 yard line and we'll bring you the coin toss and uh, 6.50 prayer and national anthem and uh, the prayer is going to be led tonight by Cam Boyd a senior. And a fine young man, a fine player, too. Got lots of enthusiasm. National anthem by the Jackson Christian Band. Tell you what we're going to do on this broadcast on the 
uh, pregame show brought to you by Great American Sports. We're going to take our first time out, and then we'll come back and talk more football. The news says Gen Z is struggling. I've got news for them. I wait tables, but last week I built a field hospital. I put out a forest fire. I stopped a thousand attackers. And a natural disaster. I've saved lives and led a team on patrol. I serve. While I go to school full time, while I work full time. The greater the challenge, the stronger we become. Looking for a new and exciting career? At Jackson State Community College, we offer nationally recognized, top-rated programs designed to greenlight your career for success. With courses available in the health sciences, nursing, computer technology, and much more, your next step towards a career starts here at Jackson State. Learn how Jackson State Community College can greenlight your future at greenlightyourfuture.com. King Jewelers is not your typical run-of-the-mill jewelry store. Grover is a certified jeweler with 35 years experience. This isn't just a jewelry store. It's an iconic symbol of love. How far would you go for love? King Jewelers 16B Conrad Drive, Jackson. Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Nissan and Carlock Prestige, the name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. Great American Sports makes sports an addiction. Located at 125B Old Hickory Boulevard, East in Jackson, we specialize in teen sports for youth leagues, schools, and churches. We can embroider and screen print team uniforms. We also have sports equipment, Under Armour, and Adidas clothing, and anything else you need for your teen sports. You can email or call us for all your teen sports needs. Great American Sports, make sports an addiction. And welcome back to the most electrifying football in Jackson, Tennessee tonight. It is here at Ronnie Fowler Stadium and Field, the home of the Jackson Christian Eagles where we celebrate the senior night. And we've got a couple of surprises for you. There'll be some other things in the celebration tonight. And very quickly, I'm going to let a young man who is very knowledgeable talk to you about, first of all, this is a very important game. And you can see our team is punted in Kicked off 6.30, senior night will start. We're going to carry that, plus I think we're going to make an extra taping. But not only is it important what's happening up in Middle Tennessee, Michael, it is very, very important what happens down here tonight because uh, Franklin Grace and Columbia fighting for the fourth spot, which would match up with us. And uh, we played one of those teams for half of a ball game. The other one we haven't seen. But tonight, we have not got – second place cinched have we that that is right um i was looking at the standings here just a minute ago and you see that usj 5 and 0 the only team that could tie them right now would be jackson christian but usj does have the win advantage over jackson christian so usj would have number one locked up there jackson christian four and one they could possibly tie with Fayette academy and trinity christian however if all, all three of those teams were to tie jackson christian still has the edge because they have the better overall record so Fayette Academy, they're either looking at a second place or a fourth place finish. The only way Fayette Academy finishes second is if they beat Jackson Christian tonight and Trinity Christian loses on the road to FACS. So Fayette Academy needs a lot of things to go in their favor tonight. Jackson Christian, uh, they can – still a game you don't want to afford to lose, but if you do lose, you're really hoping for a Trinity Christian win tonight in Memphis. But uh, that's the playoff implication. So right now – 
as long as Jackson Christian wins, they're second place, and we're playing here again next week, Coach. Yeah, USJ wins tonight. That helps. Now, uh, as you said, all other scenarios, uh, Jackson Christian is second place no matter what. It's still a rough road to weave because, you know what, USJ gets the bye. And sometimes it's good to be off. Sometimes it's not. But you know what, we've got a good football team, too. We can tackle and block when uh, we have our minds focused. We can make anything happen. We can throw the football. Uh, Lance Rowland and Gage proved that. Now, I'm not leaving the other wideouts out because Jalen Mosley's taken several to the house this year with the speed of light and the flash of sound and a hardy high O silver. Yeah, that's uh, right. Cam Boyd uh, can cow tromp you, run over you, run around you, jump over you, outrun you uh, from his spot. Uh, uh, you know, Banky can take it to the house too. And, of course, we've got other people, Daniel Green, and we'll go over all these people and have the starting lineups in just a few moments. I uh, want to send condolences out to the Dooley family, Vince Dooley, the great football coach that coached Herschel Walker and won a national championship at Georgia, did pass away. But we are about to, and if I bet I put something over that, I've got to find the script for you. We are about to go to uh, to the uh, pregame show and uh, tell you what, we're going to keep it here. And uh, anything you want to tell the fans while I am getting your – your people out there. I mean, a lot of things can happen tonight in TWSWA football. Uh, not every playoff spot has been clinched yet, and we're about to find out tonight who's going to the playoffs. Brackets will be elite, released at 11 p.m. Central Standard Time tonight. So, Tennessee's high school football fans, get ready because it might get interesting tonight. Games are being decided all across the state. I know some people in our area have a big interest in the Southside Lexington game. Southside will go perform well, but – uh, somebody's got to find a way to stop the tailback, and they run him out of the wildcat about three-fourths of the time. Stop the running back at Lexington. They, In their uh, region, they are undefeated. Hardin County is off tonight. They've got the flu down there. So they had to actually give a forfeit win to Pure Academy, who couldn't have beaten them on their best day. That is right. Hardin County is that, that good a ball club. And uh, anyway, uh, you say, gosh, Coach, that's unkind words for for Pure Academy, that's a homeschool team. Some years they're good, just depends on how their recruiting goes. And uh, there are some other games in the area. And, of course, USJ and TCA both over in Memphis tonight. USJ will have no trouble with Harding Academy. Uh, I don't doubt that one bit. USJ's closest game this year has been, at least region-wise, 34-point win against Trinity Christian at Trinity Christian. It was 48-14. to That's been their closest range in game all year long. So. And we have scored the most points against them. Unfortunately, we gave up too many points that night. That, that is correct. And, you know, that's one of the things you, you get there. And uh, you can see out there the parents, and I believe, um, and Michael's going to tell you all about it, cheerleaders should come first uh, on this, and we are happy to have senior night. It's, it's a milestone. It's uh, one of those things that marks – something in your life, not just senior night on the field, but when you get handed that diploma in May, uh, life changes. You can go to a fine school like Michael goes to. He is a ministerial student at Freight Hardeman University, and I'm very proud of him. He's also been my color man in basketball. That too. is right. And Freight's a good place to go, though, aren't they? It sure is, sure is. And, uh, you know, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat a little early here. I got, I got a sheet left over from If you're not listening to the Hub City Deli, show on Tuesday nights, you are missing it. 7 o'clock to approximately 7.59. And um, first of all, we got the greatest producer over there in the world. I could close my eyes, sew my mouth together, and never say anything. The producer makes the show happen along with Brian Bullard, Coach Darby Palmer. But uh, you hear all about we have interviews with the young people, Cam Boyd and uh, Gage Boykin and Mosley and some of those. Not, they weren't all on the same night, but they were earlier in the season. We just had – Chilton Smith and Lance Rowland, what an entertaining night with them. But And we not only discuss football and where they're going to go to college or what they want to be and stuff, you find out little things like favorite sports memory. And one of them that comes up frequently is the field goal against USJ that Alden Smith kicked a couple of years ago. We also find out about their favorite classes and who the teachers are that they love to have their class. And that looks like Jason Shelton who used to be Freed Hardeman's basketball coach, also at Chester County. Now he is athletic director 
and uh, holds a couple of other titles here at Jackson Christian School. Also a pretty good speech teacher. We let him do a little uh, color uh, in a baseball broadcast about a year ago, two years ago, and he's pretty good at it. Huh. And uh, Michael, maybe you can come up and do a little baseball with us this year. Hey, that's hopefully the plan. Hopefully the plan. But the, uh, fortunately, being a college student, that does keep you busy uh, a lot of the time, unfortunately. We're going to try to keep an eye on Middle Tennessee the best we can. Um, and a couple of things, we'll have a, a really special f first play of the ball game when Jackson Christian gets the ball on offense. Don't leave to go get a sandwich between the first and second quarters because our excellent middle school, or middle school, elementary school flag program is going to be out there. And those kids are, are they're so much fun to watch on Saturdays and stuff. And, We've already talked about we had the middle school coaches on the Hub City Deli show and some things like that. But, what you know, Worthy Road Studios is going to try to bring you some separate broadcasts and make things really, really outstanding for you senior night. And, of course, Worthy Road did a great job when it came to the um, homecoming. And uh, tell you what we might want to do is – Talk about a little bit about last week, white knuckler, slobber knocker, and then turned into uh, where both teams hitting pretty hard. We introduced a new broadcasting word that's actually an old one that I got from, I actually got from my high school coach called molly hocking. Molly hocking is when you knock the stuffings out of somebody. And in football, it takes a little different terminology, but, you know, um, you can hit somebody so hard that you molly hocked them. Remember Johnny Williams, Bud Sykes, Tom Fan, O'Neill Henley, Richard Ross all used that term. They wanted us to go out and mollyhock people. <laughs> now, have you ever heard that one before? I don't think I've ever. I bet Bobby Sharp never used it. I don't one. think Bobby Sharp ever used that word. Now, that's one thing he did. Uh, John Tucker used it too, but you know John Tucker was an old Northside boy. I did not know that. Yes. Did not know that. Of course, we've got some outstanding people here. I hope Adam Reagan is listening. He is one of the great rushers, but I was impressed. I got hold of his defensive stats the other night. We got to talk to Adam sometime, Adam Reagan. Cam Boyd uh, also playing tonight, great rusher. Nathan Nash, he's got a son playing, got one at Rhodes, but Nathan was an outstanding player. And, of course, people remember the names like Darby and Pearson and people like that have played through the past here. Uh, and uh, Dre Bowles, who played at the University of Tennessee for three years, finished at the University of Tennessee Chattanooga. Uh, we've had great athletes all the way through here. Some great running backs, some great defensive people. And, um, you know, it. Uh, even the guy we call Dirty Steve, Steve Hamilton, was a backup punter here and did learned a lot of others too. Now he's big-time executive out in Arizona. And that's what Jackson Christian will do for you is he's in charge of all the field. We're going to turn it over to Michael Mullenix. It looks like that we are about ready to start with the ceremonies here. Yeah, I see Coach – is that Coach Shelton trying to get – Okay, they they are going to move people down. If we we're not seeing him, we're seeing the, and we've got some fine young people. Love our band uniforms. Always did have a passion for blue and gold, <laughs> and white. And they're going to go ahead and introduce the first cheerleader. It's going to be Miss. I think they said Katie Alexander, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and uh, your list is probably or have they got it in order? I think they got it in order by yeah Katie alphabet, alphabetic, uh, Katie cheerleader and. One thing you definitely like about senior night shows the dedication that these people have had. And now we could be one year, two year, three year, four years, however many years they played, but dedication's always good to be shown on senior night coach. Absolutely. And cheerleading is important. It also they have competitive cheerleading as a sport in the TWSAA. And uh, the reason Michael is handling the names and stuff is it come will come across the the mic better coming from in here. Michael and Miss Lauren Day is the next one. Not only is she a part of the cheerleading squad, but also a member of the Jackson Christian Band. And uh, let's see. I think that was the right. Was that Lauren Day? It, I think that might actually might have been ha yeah. Hallie Bramblett. Yeah, not, and this is Brassfield, Chloe yes. Brassfield. So that, apologize for that. Hallie Bramblett and now Chloe Brassfield, members of the band here. And one thing a lot of people don't realize and this next one, Ryder Hendry, is that 
no matter who you are, you always play a part in the game somehow, whether you're a fan, player, coach, band member, cheerleader, you always play a part in the game. It's just everyone doesn't know it. You're correct about that. And final band member, uh, Mr. Jackson Young. Four, actually, excuse me, five band members being recognized tonight, one cheerleader, and not to mention we'll also have members of the golf team uh, recognized and the cross-country team. And getting their picture taken with yes. their parent. I like that. Good photographer down there, too. That's right. And next one, uh, this is the start of the golf seniors. It is Miss Sydney Julian. And I believe that was the only girls senior golfer. And this was the start of the guys senior golfers, Elijah Miller being the first one. And this, this one, a uh, golf and cross-country player, uh, is going to be Mr. Braden Riddle. And I'm not exactly sure how JCS did in golf this they year. He had a good year, made it to the state tournament. And Brady Webb, the next one, I believe Brady has actually signed to play golf at uh, Freed Hardman for this next, the next four years. Brady probably. has and one other. We've got two headed, got I believe, two. to Freed Hardman. And then um, Dylan. Dylan Young is the next one. Well, let's see. Uh, actually, this, uh, yeah, Dylan Young. Dylan is possibly headed to, there's a couple of schools that's talking to him right now, North Alabama being one of them. With Dylan, that concludes the golf and cross-country team. And now for football, man who had an amazing game last week, and that one is Cam Boyd. Cam, I believe, what, 268 rushing yards last week? He was over 200 yards. I covered my stats up because I, I also have to keep a 268 yards, two touchdowns, 13th career, 100-yard game. What a game there by Cam Boyd. And this next one, Wyatt Jones. Uh, what is Wyatt? Play? Wyatt catches and plays linebacker. He can play H-back. And he is an unlicensed chiropractor, meaning that he's a linebacker. <laughs> next one, uh, quarterback. Uh, is Gage Boykin, and Gage has had a great season so far. He is, I believe, third in all, or excuse me, eighth in all of Division II single A in passing yards. He's got a little rifle arm. And next one is Cooper Banky, and Liz is getting away from me here. Great senior wide out, defensive back, can run the jet sweep. Andrew Potts. Andrew Potts, of course. He, uh, what a young man he is. He plays football and baseball. He pitches in baseball and plays second base. And the next one is, is going to be Lance Rowland. Lance, a cornerback for the Eagles. Uh, last stats we got on him, I know he's got three tackles, uh, but. Well, he know. had the big touchdown catch for the win last week. Big touchdown catch for the win. You know, with all that, he's. Some people claim he uses Gorilla Glue on his hands. That's not true. <laughs> Next one is Dustin Smith. And Dustin, he, I believe, plays on the offense, if I'm not mistaken. Dustin, a very fine young football player. Uh, he has pretty good quickness, too. And the next one is going to be Joey Carr. He plays offense and defense, and he can flat get after you. From what I can gather, pretty good right tackle, if I'm not mistaken. You better believe it. And Presley Ed Edmiston, the next one, and I believe this is one of our uh, special – oh, never mind. We'll, we'll hold it. But Presley is one of the finest young centers. He's been hurt both years. He started some games last year, and we saw him. What a great center as a college prospect, but injuries have ended his career. And you definitely hate to see that. The next one is going to be Chilton Smith. And, and Chilton had 11 sacks or tackles last week. 11 tackles. He had 11 tackles. He was all over the field. Second half, he was dominant. And Dalton Deloach, the next one to come out for the seniors. And Dalton, trying to find his stats here real quick. Well, Dalton is a great offensive tackle, can play defense. And uh, 
And here comes Childers out there. Dalton Deloach, uh, I believe, was second season as starter. He's a team captain. He was all region last year, honorable mention. That's right. And Kyle Christensen. One thing, good thing about going to Miss South Youth Camp all these years, Kyle Christensen was always a joy to be around, and I have no doubt he is like that on the football field as well. Now, I've got to ask you something. Isn't he coming to throw the shot down at Freed Hardeman? I think I believe that's correct, if I'm not mistaken. And this is the senior that we accidentally called a minute ago, but she did not come out yet. It is Lauren, Miss Lauren Day, who does both band and cheer. Very, from what I can gather, very talented individual there, able to do both. She is at that, and a, a great person in this program, just like all of our kids. And, of course, uh, like I said, Aiden Childers, the senior lineman, plays offense and defense. And each one of them now, I think they're going to play like a senior night message that is somewhat of a testimony. And I don't know if you can hear that from there. And uh, we're going to, uh, we've got it on the young people and, uh, the here. My and, name is Cameron Boyd. I'm a part of the track and field. Okay, and I think we're going to try to pick their team. statements up. My name is Holly Benlet. I play Melissa on the field. I'm a part of the track and field. My name is Holly Benlet. I play Melissa on the field. My name is Chloe Bassfield, and I'm involved in Hillgard and the Eagles Marching Band. My name is Joey Carton, and I play football with Jackson Christian. I'm Lauren Day, and I'm a part of Varsity Cheer and Eagles Marching Band. My name is Owen Lush, and I'm part of the Jackson Christian football team. My name is Preston Edison, and I am a part of the Jackson Christian football team. My name is Ryder Henry. I've been a percussionist in the Eagle Concert and Marching Band for seven years. My name is Wyatt Jones. I'm part of football and baseball, and I've been playing for the past seven years here. My name is Sydney Jerjillian, and I'm part of the golf program and the softball team. My name is Elijah Miller, and I'm involved in golf, tennis, and Clark. My name is Andrew Potts, and I am a part of the football and baseball team. My name is Brady Riddle, and I'm a part of the golf and cross country team. My name is Lance Rowan, and I'm a part of the football team. My name is Jason Smith, and I'm a part of the football team. My name is Sean Smith, and I'm a part of the football team. My name is Brady Red, and I've been a part of the JCS golf team for five years. My name is Dylan Young, and I'm a part of the Jackson Christian golf team. My name is Jackson Young, I play trumpet in the Eagle Marching Band. Golf and frustration have made me feel challenged. I've definitely learned patience. I've definitely learned the value of hard work from golf, tennis, even choir. I mean, there's people that put in a lot of work on stuff, and you can't be good unless you really put in the work outside of school. I need some patience because, you know, it's, it's a grind. You have to, it takes a while to get better at I learned that golf is a team sport and that you have to rely on your teammates. It's really difficult to be good without your team self. Uh, I've learned how important friendships are, how close I became with my teammates and how important it is to have those bonds. A band makes me feel appreciated. I feel welcome. I feel like I belong. Yeah, building relationships through hard work and how the importance of teamwork to meet a goal. I have a great support group behind me that they can it. I would say that practice does not make perfect. It makes improvement and that you should keep striving to excel and to succeed. Just learn to push myself and to accomplish what I want to achieve. Band makes me feel accomplished because no matter what trials we go through or what blocks are in our path, it is always worth it to push through and get to the other side and excel through those. I think I've learned the value of hard work. Varsity cheerleading has given me a lot of confidence. I've definitely learned a lot of lessons from cheerleading, but I think my favorite is my appreciation for working with the little cheerleaders now. I see it as an opportunity to invest in the future of Jackson Christian cheerleading, and I see myself in those little people's cheerleaders, and I think that's my favorite thing that I've gotten to do. If I had some of I would use the word fulfilling. Fulfill. Because a lot of the responsibility and hard work you put in pays off eventually. When I'm out there, I can just get everything I have and not have to worry about outside worries or stress. I would sum up football as keeping me humble. There's always going to be somebody who's going to be better than you, but you got to work harder to surpass them and be better. Uh, Coach P has really taught us to be selfless. I learned through football that if I do my part, my team succeeds. Something that I've learned is probably to overcome adversity. I've learned to take criticism and then also learn from the people that have come before us. I've learned to take everything I do wrong and use it to make myself better. Something I've learned is that you only get out as much as you could. Every day the coaches are pushing us and making us work harder and harder. 
if I could sum up me experience, I use the word progress. Each day you got to focus on continuing to progress and to be a better person than you were. I've learned how to lead a group of guys and just how to fight through adversity. And I learned how important friendships are when you go through the uh, challenges in your life. Um, a lot of times when things don't go our way, we have a bunch of people that are, you know, that they go through it with you. They're, they're not just letting you go through it by yourself. They'll be right by your side. Football has made me feel loved. Sometimes things may not go as planned. You know, there's always someone to uplift you and make you feel better. Let's give these seniors one more round of applause. Thank you again for the impact that you have made. Remember that you will always have a place at Jackson Christian. Go Eagles! And we are back here in the booth. We, after they let the young people come down to finish the picture taking and ceremonies, we'll be taking a time out and come back. Michael and I will talk about this football game and some others in the area. And what a fine group of young people. I get to interact with most of them all the time and like I said the ones that uh, play multiple sports I catch them in one sport or the other and this is a happy time they'll be a lot happier though Michael if they win this football game that is right and we hope to see it here in just a few minutes now this one is not one of those gimme games we have made one FACS we beat the stuffings out of a very fine team it came in here loaded with talent and some things like that. We beat a St. George team. Those two teams, along with North Point, we played three Division two AA teams and played quite well against them. And, of course, North Point has the, I call him the great Jack Patterson, who is going to throw for over 3,000 yards again this year. And uh, we beat a very fine team. Not only beat them, but we beat them at their house. And you don't do that very often to North Point. Oh, no, you definitely do not. We've got 12 minutes on the clock. We're going to turn it back over and take a time out on Worthy Road Studios. Please pay attention. These fine sponsors will be back after this. Thompson & Smith, the area's premier independent insurance brokerage, has been serving families and businesses in the region through its founding companies since 1927. With their many insurance company partners, Thompson & Smith provides insurance products for family, home and auto, contractors, retailers, restaurants, manufacturers, medical and dental clinics as well as any other business or organization seeking quality coverage, risk management expertise and customer-focused service. Call them today to discuss your insurance needs. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. He shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. Oh. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. on Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. If you work outside or in a facility with no AC, or you're just struggling with this year's heat wave, it can really take a toll on your body and health. At Live Hydration Drip Spa, we can help you recover with our Beat the Heat special for only $59. Call or visit us online today to set your appointment. Hey, this is Chuck Walker with Southeastern Termite and Pest Control. If you live in West Tennessee, you have a need for the services we offer. We treat for all types of pests, including bed bugs, brown recluse spiders, and other hard-to-treat pests. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to encapsulate a crawl space. Give us a call to hear how to achieve the same thing and save thousands. Southeastern Termite and Pest Control can handle all of your termite and pest control needs, wood fungus and moisture barriers, real estate closing letters, and so much more. Southeastern, 731-660. 1052. And we are back. We'll be having the Jackson Christian starting lineup, but Michael, uh, give us a few facts about Fayette Academy, coached by actually a, a former Jacksonian and coached at TCA and played at uh, Old Hickory Academy. That's right. Fayette Academy, they've got a couple of key players, especially on their offense, that you really need to look out for tonight. Corbin Bowling, the sophomore, is – Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a time out and come back and finish that report in just a moment on Worthy Road Studios.
Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. At McCoy's Heating and Air, we realize there are more than enough things to worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. With our new 10-year all-inclusive package, your home comfort doesn't have to be one of them. For one low monthly payment, you can purchase a brand new York unit with full maintenance and repair coverage for 10 years with approved credit. No hassle, no stress, just complete coverage for your comfort and convenience. Contact McCoy's Heating and Air at 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com to schedule your free new AC estimate today. This is how we Friday night. How do you Friday night? This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. No matter how you Friday night, you always win at Kaufman. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre-owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. And we are back here at Ronnie Fowler Stadium. And we're going to let Michael finish and tell you a couple of things about them, a little history. And, of course, you know I'm going to fill you in with history of Jackson Christian School. Eric Cohue is still the leading coach here, but Darby Palmer right on his uh, – trail there to get that but here's Michael that's right Bate Academy comes into this contest five and four and their last matchup actually was a win uh, last week at home against Harden Academy big win 51 to 14 hopefully thinking coming in with momentum against the Jackson Christian Eagles they got a couple of key players though as I was saying that we really need to watch out for one of them is sophomore quarterback Corbin Bowling Corbin this year, 864 passing yards. That's fourth in the West Division, or in the West Region, ninth in all of Class 2 AA. In addition with that, he's also proven to be a pretty good scrambler. 622 rush yards, fifth in the West Region in all rushing yards, and tenth in Division 2 Class A in all those rushing yards. They got a pretty good receiver as well, and that guy's name is Eason Wells. Eason this year, 491 receiving yards. That's third in all of the West Region, sixth in Division II AA. Or, excuse me, sing, Division II single A. Uh, so, Fade Academy with a win, win tonight and a Trinity Christian loss, they will take second place. However, Jackson Christian going to look to shut that down as Jackson Christian has got some key players of their own uh, Jackson Christian, one of the highest scoring offenses in uh, Class 2 Division Division Single A. Uh, Gage Bulkin has proven to be one of those guys helping that out. 887 passing yards, third in the West West Division, eighth in, uh, eighth in the class. Cam Boyd, who had an amazing game last week, got over the 1,000-yard mark, 1,190 yards. That's just third in Class 2 Division A. And then you got a good receiver in Jalen Mosley, 483 receiving yards, fourth in the division, eighth in all the class. And then Eli Craig, who's proven to be a pretty good defensive guy from what I've heard. Uh, look, got to look at some of his stats. 59 tackles this season, fifth in the division, in, uh, leading in tackles, tenth in all of Class 2 AA. So this is going to be a good one, Coach. I'm excited to see how this is going to roll. Uh, see, we got, we got the captains go ahead and coming out. But – it's the last week of TWSWA High School regular season football. So, as we've seen before, anything can happen, Coach. You are absolutely right. I need to get my mic adjusted a little bit. And we, we see Wyatt Jones, Cam Boyd, 13 is Cooper Banky, and number 12, Gage Boykin, will be the captains going out there. Across the way, that looks like number three for them. That's Connor Maines, and he can tote the pumpkin. And uh, that sounds kind of flat. And, like I'm a hillbilly to say pumpkin, but uh, that's the way it is. Ten yep. is Corbin Bolin. He is a captain as a sophomore, and of course, 59 is one of their better linemen 
Uh, this guy may be short, but he packs a wallop. This is Alan Bowman, the senior. And, of course, they're introducing themselves to each other. You got to do that last night and handle a coin toss, didn't you? Yeah, that's, well, I actually do rock, paper, scissors with our uh, intramural football league. But yeah, Michael referees in it for folks that don't know and does a good job. Very honest young man. And um, he's got more patience than I do. When my eyesight went bad, I said it was time for me to give up officiating. And, of course, the Vikings will call it. And they've been shown the coin. And it'll hit the ground, and you can do that on AstroTurf and not worry about it turning sideways most of the time. Let's see who won the toss as we are watching the monitor. And let's see what the choices are here. They are going to, they being the Vikings, are going to uh, defer. And you know what Jackson Christian is going to do. Only one time since I've been here in Darby Palmer's career has he not taken the football we would like to strike first, and tonight it is imperative that we strike first. Yeah, you definitely don't want Fade Academy with the ball first, possibility of getting uh, first first touchdown and a lot of momentum to start the game. Fade, Fade Academy, they were coming into this game. Let me get my stats back up here. Coming into this game, only scoring 31.22 points per game and allowing, 20, or allowing over 27 points a game. Now, 31 points a game, you might say that's not much, but – yeah, I mean, Jack, when you got Jackson Christian with 43 points a game, it's it's a, it's a little much. I want to put our flag barrier in, and you know what time it is in Tennessee. It's football time in Jackson, Tennessee, as the Eagles make their appearance on the, the field. Fayette Academy kind of waited on us and came uh, just a little later. But I'm going to tell you what, the young man carrying the flag has got good speed. You can play flanker for me, son. Guarantee you. You see the total captains that we have out there um, on the scoreboard if uh, we – Dalton Deloach had to stay on sideline because they only allow four guys to come out there. And uh, I believe Joey Carr is also a captain, has rotated in. And they're, the, I believe, the two that didn't get to go out tonight. But uh, good, good set, and any of them can take the captainship. You know who's going to be back deep. Oh, yes, Elijah DeMoss will be to on the Fayette Academy side. Jack Collins, the man that had the big interception, play some pretty fair football, too. And the man with all the speed, the blue streak, he gets quicker. Jalen Mosley, who's just a sophomore. And uh, we see Cooper Banky up here at about the 37-yard line. And let's see who is that Potts. Yes, Andrew Potts in the middle. Got two guys that uh, can handle the ball and, and receive it. Don't know who the far side is. That's probably Austin Kelly. I see an 11, and it is. Now, the kickoff man, they have a very fine youngster for them. It looks and like Zane Pike, if I'm not mistaken. It is. He wears 81, right? That is that is correct. And he can kick the football. And I've got a split roster, and there's a reason for it because it's the only one with the correct spellings on it. <laughs> but Pike has put it down. It's a little closer to his sideline. And they I don't know where they've chosen directional. Now, I see up at about the 10 is Mosley. And he backs up a step or two. So, let's see. Pike's got a good leg. He sends one end over end. Only Mosley comes up, takes it at the 15, the 20, the 30, the 40. This could go all the way. One man can slow him down, and the other one will stop him. And they, otherwise, they haven't stopped him yet. He's across the 30 down to the 25. And we almost got to say he's going all the way. But a good run. Yeah, that's Michael. right. Look at it right here, Coach. I mean, as soon as he gets the ball, you see the Jackson Christian there. You can see their lineman. Already on the block, allows the opening right there, and he gets a good return out of that. Wish I'd have been paying attention to where he caught the ball, see how many 15. yards. 15. So that's about, but my math is correct, about a 65 yard gain, if I'm not mistaken. Wide side of the field to the left. To, and this is the honorary thing that we were going to tell you about. Presley Edmonston, the fine center, came out there and snapped the football. He is injured and will not be able to play any more this year. As a matter of fact, his career is basically over. But a nice thing, Presley Edmondson, the senior center. you got to know this kid. Met him last year. What a nice young man. Wears 66. And, folks, let me tell you, he was all-state caliber when he's healthy. He got hurt earlier this year, too, and that kind of finished it off. But that was a nice ceremony. First snap, Fayette Academy was very nice. They agreed to this. So here we go. Gage Boykin with Boyd to the right. They give to him. He gets outside of one man. Don't block in the back. 
and he's going to have his first down, and he's yanked down. I, I would have called it a horse collar, but mm, I don't know. What do you think, Michael? Uh, we can see it right here. Good, just right into his hands, gets the outside, and then number 10, 24, just couldn't get the block on him. Or, excuse me, that was number 16, just couldn't get that block on him. And Ed, it's a close call, but doesn't, but doesn't know how. Don't know how you should have. Yeah, we didn't worded. get a good look at the tackle. It was either 18 or 16 tackle. Was, I believe it was 16 that made the tackle right there. And a ball down to the 11-yard line. It's first and 10. We can get a first down. Here comes Mosley to the right. Getting driven back. That was a nice form tackle right there. But we and did gain positive yardage down to at least the 9, maybe the 8-yard line. And just couldn't break that tackle. Uh, number two. I believe number 23 from Fayette Academy, or excuse me, 53 from Fayette Academy, just had a good takedown right into Mosley. Rolling to the left in the slot, Banky. Wide out, single wide out to the right is Mosley. Boykin gives off. They're grabbing at the back of Boyd's jersey, and he will not get the first down. He'll be down about the six, maybe the five. I think they're going to show his forward progress at the six. That's right. You just see Fayette Academy just – a big sea of Vikings right there just just surrounded Boyd on that one. That's the only way you're going to stop Boyd is when you have a sea around him. Now, you don't want to be thinking ahead too much, but we have the good field goal kicker, and we want to put points on the board. It's third and five. Uh, we can get a first down without scoring. Really need to put the touchdown in here, but we have the fine kicker in Cisco to do that. Straighten up, throwing the fade into the back of the end zone, but it, uh, whoops, it's going to be pass interference, it looked like, and did I get in your way? Then, uh, no, you're, well, I can, we got the replay for a reason. It's yeah. here. So yeah, you got Boykin, good lob pass, almost perfect placement, and yeah, 81 right there just couldn't make a play on the ball. Instead, makes a play on the defen on the receiver there. And that should be half the distance to the goal line, should be our second first down. Because we're six yards away, and that would take I believe, it. I believe no. they said replay third. Yeah, I think yeah, it's like if it's, you don't. It's going to stay third because that's not going to get it to the first down marker. So it's third and two after the penalty. 9.27 to go. Ball on the right hash mark. It's on the three-yard line. It's got to get to the one for a first down, three for a touchdown. Stretching it is Banky far to the left. One back in the backfield. They give. Oh, what a and nice handoff. Wyatt Jones took it to the house. Touchdown, Wyatt Jones and Jackson Christian. And look at this here. Fakes off to Boyd. Jones wide open lane to the end zone. Nice touchdown here by Jackson Christian early in this game. Wyatt Jones had the fake was good. Wyatt ran hard. And everybody chased Boyd with the kitchen sink. That's right. And it's down in the concession stand, so I didn't see it. Touchdown, Jackson Christian. Zach Sisko coming on with the hold of Austin Kelly to attempt the extra point. You always see him warm up a little bit and get that leg loose because you get stiff over on, on the sideline. Zach Sisko just a junior this year. Here's the snap to Kelly. The kick is up. The kick is perfect. Jackson Christian leads seven to nothing. Let's take a timeout here on the Jackson Christian Worthy Road Studios Network. For anyone contemplating pre-planning, we can tell you from our experience, it's much easier to make funeral plans and record them now than wait until emotions are running at their highest. With pre-planning, you can free your mind and heart from having to make big decisions during a time of grief and instead enjoy the freedom to focus on the memories of a life well lived. back 7-0 Jackson Christian leads after the excellent kickoff return and then some good offensive play there was a penalty in the end zone and special teams are especially a Fayette Academy a lot of the teams in our region have had trouble with their special teams this one gonna give them some trouble it's in the end zone it's out of here no chance Home run Zach Cisco. that's right no chance of returning that for the Vikings there 
And I see our fine young uh, freshman linebacker is not dressed out tonight, Lucas Witherspoon. He is helping his teammates, but we got to get Lucas healthy along with some of those others. He and uh, Tristan Nash have contributed as freshmen. Now it's up to the defense to jam the holes because they've got a good running game. They'll start with bowling at quarterback. He can go under center. He can go into the spread. They're starting with a double wing setup. We jumped and into neutral zone. That's I know Caleb was trying to get a good start, but that's not what you want to do. Don't let them draw you offside. And they'll use a unrhythmic count sometimes. That's right. And with Bowling last week, got to watch some of his game. Well, it wasn't last week, actually. It was against, uh, I believe, Trinity Christian when I watched that. He was a 75 to 25% went under center, and then 25% of the time he went. To, and Bowling uh, goes incomplete on the first play. And um, they ran a little, not razzle-dazzle, but a little uh, trickery. We're back with second and five, and that was the giveaway down. So it's still like they gained for, uh, five yards on that. We'll bring up second and five, ball on the 25. Cisco put them in the end zone. We'll cover it. I see Big Cedric in the middle line, Chilton Smith out there, Wyatt Jones. Jack Collins, and again, they're going to come with the double wing setup, and this is more of a running formation against USJ and TCA. They threw a whole lot, and uh, there we, they faked us off. We grabbed one man, but it was the second one had it, and it looks like Bowling is going to get his first down. And he does have his initial first down, and this is a hard – this is what Crockett County used to run except for with no wide out. Yeah, and Bowling just had – he just wasn't giving up on that one. That's one thing they got on the first down. If he would have went down at the start, then he would have been about a yard, yard and a half short of the first down. First and 10 on their own 32. Now they go with a slot. This is what we've been used to seeing on tape. And they'll show you a lot of formations. They'll do the same thing on defense. One back in the backfield, and it's trips, actually. And they keep – bowling will keep it a whole lot. He is one of their leading rushers, and he is breaking tackles, outrunning people. Jack Collins has got an angle on him. Mosley comes up from behind. But a nice gain from the 32 down to about the 32. That's right. And just bowling, seeing the field perfectly right there and just found every hole in that defense right there and was able to get a big gain out of that one. Got to control him and know where he is at all times. It'll be a slot right. I see three in the backfield. Six is their H-back, or some people want to call him a blocking back from single wing days, but he's really an H-back, will become a true wing sometimes. Split to the right and left. Now they make it a slot, and they're just going to try three, who's also a very good runner, but he's going to be run out of bounds at the stake. That's right. No gain on that one. And Wyatt Jones with the tackle. Wyatt does such a good job at that linebacker. Great catcher in baseball, too. And uh, – He's a senior, though, and I know the baseball team will miss him also when he's gone. But running the football was Maines, and, and Maines, you know, usually can get that corner turn. The footwork for 24, who is one of their running backs, Wyatt Morris, is excellent. Keep an eye on him. He can be spread. Now they're back to the wing tee or the Crockett County version of it. And they're just going to give, and he's off the right side. He is going to take it to the house, and this is not what we need, an attempt to get him tackled by Easton Jones. But 31 yards for Means or Mains, and um, it's a chance to tie it up here. That's right. He just, just somehow I was able to get through that Jackson Christian defense right there and able to get six points on the board. And looks like. I feel like it's going to be Pike on the PAT attempt. Yeah, he's a very good young kicker, just a sophomore. Same Pike. And he could tie the ball game up here at 734. The kick is up. The kick looks good. The officials say it is good. And this contest is tied at seven. Let's take a timeout here on the Jackson Christian Worthy Road Studios Network. We realize you have a busy lifestyle. And at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs, personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. 
Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. We had the big kickoff return, then finished a 25-yard drive for a touchdown with Cisco Extra Point. Uh, they had a low-risk attack then using the double wing T. It's not the true wing T with two people in there, but it is a double wing. And, Michael, well, they crammed it down our throat. Now. That's right. And this might be what we could see all game, a possible just offensive shootout here. Mosley, the deepest man, he nearly broke one. I guarantee you they have – change their strategy of how they're going to kick this one. See what Pike has up his sleeve along with his coaching staff. And this is a directional kick in the direction of DeMoss, but Mosley floats over there, and they may have him jammed up unless he can get – needs a block. And he didn't get the one he needed, but it's still a nice return. Yeah, still a, still a good kick or return there by number 23, Mosley, and – yeah, got a, got a little yeah Mitchell's up. body shop replay. See, we got some people not picking people up, and now there's too many to – only one guy can attack. And they fill in pretty good. It's first and ten on our own 48-yard line, or 47 make it. Two great returns. Now, we almost got them to jump. Now, you, we can step back like that as long as we're not making a football move. We've got the two receivers on the line. They – and we try to get Boyd over the left tackle. Spins, breaks one. He'll get to the 50 and driven back. And let's see if they give him proper forward progress. Looks like they got him right at the 50. And just what a play there by Boyd. Good spin move right there. And, yeah, they're going to give him the forward progress right, right in front of the 50-yard line. Second and seven. Wide side of the field, there is none. It's in the middle. Slot left. Mosley right. We're going to throw to Mosley on a quick out. He's going to dance, gets by one man. Only one man has an angle if he doesn't step out of bounds. Five, four, three, two, one, touchdown. Jalen Mosley and Jackson Christian. And this might be the way to go here. Look at the pass here by Boykin. Mosley gets him on the curl route and then just beats him right there. The, the, sw the screen pass might be the way to go tonight, Coach. It should be. That's a little quick step. He's got more moves than a hula girl over there. 50 yards on the catch. Cisco on to attempt the extra point. Get your calculators out. You're going to need it tonight. 50 yards on the catch and touchdown throw. Boykin one for one now because the, that was not an incompletion with the penalty. Here's the snap a little low, but they get it up. The kick is good. It split the uprights, and it's 14-7 with Jackson Christian leading on the Worthy Road Jackson Christian Studios Network. Let's take a timeout. Buying a car is all about you. In person, over the phone, or online, we make it simple and easy. Our place is yours no matter where you live. LonnieCobbFord.com or Lonnie Cobb Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And we are back. I'm out of breath. I'm calling for oxygen. Candace Rowland, Lance Rowland's mom, my nurse practitioner. Candace got to have some oxygen up here. Cisco ready to kick off. And, of course, they've got their really good man deep back at the goal line, but he's just going to watch it go. And, again, um, you know what? Maybe getting more home runs out of uh, – Zach Cisco than the than Judge did in the playoffs. Uh, that, that's very true right there. Am I being unkind to Eric oh, Judge? Oh, no. He's talking about leaving and going to San Fran. They say they're not going to get outbid. 80 yards away, but that meant nothing, Michael, a few minutes ago. Oh, no, it did not. Jackson Christian defense got a bow its back, fill the gaps, and they got to lock up and drive people back right here. Collins manned up. Looks like Blake Rowland manned up. There's three receivers there. Uh, they send a man in motion. They're going to bring it back with somewhat of a counter, and we're there. 
That one didn't fool anybody, and we all met at the running back. That's right. Look at the read here by the linebacker. You see number five, no movement at all towards that other side. Goes right into him, and a good play there by number five, and that is Kai Wyatt. Well, that's going to be a loss of two. It brings up second and 12. The ball is on the 18-yard line, closer to the Jackson Christian sideline. They've stretched a receiver out beyond the – Hash marks. He'll be picked up. Should be Carrier picking him up. Looks like Easton Jones playing uh, the one high safety. They send a man in motion. They fake bring the counter back. Wyatt Jones stayed in there, but the young man got good body lean. He'll probably get to the 21-yard line when he's pushed back by a host of tacklers. So it should be about third and nine if I had to guess, third and nine. But just – Jackson Christian defense is alive on this drive right there. Look at just the swarm of Eagles right there just just getting to the running back. Absolutely. Now, we don't need to give up. Now, there will be a lot of misdirection, crossing. They, they can run the cross buck out of this. They can uh, have Xing type formations with the running backs. Now, they split three receivers. Got a fairly tight slot, two wide outs. They're going to drop back and pass. Looking, looking, chasing him out of the end zone. They've got – or back towards the end zone. The football is loose. Fayette Academy looks like they've got it. One of their big linemen, but a huge loss, and it'll bring fourth down up and a, about a $30 cab ride. That's right. And I thought Christensen might have gotten to it, but and they're going to call it intentional grounding. Woo. So that's a loss of down. Interesting. So they will have to kick the football, and I'm not sure Michael Holden is going to be exactly happy about that call. But it will be a punting situation for them. It is fourth and, like I said, a $30 cab ride with inflation. That's right. So let's see what the punt team can do here for both the Vikings and the Eagles. One man, lonely man, Jalen Mosley back at the 41 of the Vikings. Nice high kick, but short. Now you got to clear out of the way if you're Jackson Christian. Does take a bounce for them. It'll be down, what, 22, 23 yard line? Yeah, it looks like they're going to spot it right the 22 and a half. Wow. What action. Good, good field position here for the Eagles. And Vincent was right with you, who's doing camera tonight. He's from the old staff that we uh, used to have. Of course, he's got other jobs. He's doing a great job helping us out tonight. That is right. And, uh, and Vincent can't hear me say something nice. Man, Jackson Christian has it first and 10 on the 22 of Fate Academy, wide side to the right, rolling and Banky there, Mosley to the left. They're going to straighten up, throw across to Banky on the look in, had it in and out of his hands. Nice tackle by the defensive back for yeah. them. And it was almost, almost got it there, just couldn't. Just couldn't hang on to it, but luckily it's only second down. You got two more tries to get it. Oh, yeah, and plus this is within uh, Zach Sisko's range, even with the 10 yards and the seven for the holding, um, the holder to get back. Here's Mosley in motion. They give to Boyd. He's going to pull some shirts and probably pick up about four. That's right. And look at this replay right here by Mitchell's Body Shop. And at – just couldn't full fade Academy right there. Almost had, but almost had him. It only looked like number 17 from the Vikings was able to get it. And we'll try to get you some scores on the games that affect us. Now, it looks like we've got a timeout, or is that an injured player? Yeah, got an injured, injured player. player. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick timeout, and we'll be back on Worthy Road Studios after this. At Nest Realty Jackson, connections and relationships are at the heart of everything we do. We wake up every day with the goal of helping our agents build trust, relationships, and community. Let's connect. Lifestyle Vision, located at Thompson Farms, offers patient-centered, comprehensive eye exams. Select your new look with our latest styles from exclusive brands. Come see us Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, or schedule an appointment anytime online. Lifestyle Vision, where compassion meets commitment. We are back here where Jackson Christian leads 14 to 7. They have the football deep in the Fayette Academy territory. A young man, and we hate, we're glad he's up on his own power, and maybe he's not hurt very bad. I hate to see injuries, Michael. Yeah, that's right. It looks like he just got the wind knocked out of him, if, it, if I'm correct. But he, he's able to walk off his own power, so definitely good to see. Boyd with only 19 yards on three carries, but he had that big first down for us early. 
It's third and seven. The ball is on the 19th wide side of the field to the right. Mosley's in the slot this time. Two backs in the backfield, and they're going to sneak Banky out of there. They're throwing for the corner of the end zone. Mosley is there. Mosley has got it. Give him six. And look at this. Look at this replay. Slot receiver there for Mosley, and Boykin could not have put that in a better spot. Good pass by Gage Boykin, second passing touchdown of the night. Yes, it is. Gage, uh, you could say he's hotter than the proverbial $2 pistol. Now, what people mean by that is if you fire a $2 pistol very rapidly, uh, guess what? It's going to burn your hand. That's where that is. Some of my expressions I have to explain because I forgot I'm talking to a younger audience now. Old folks like me remember, here's the snap. Cisco, you know what the word is, automatica. That is right. 21-7. And it's only taking them seven minutes to score 21 points, Coach. Let's see what they can do the rest of the game. I wonder if the, oh, the combined over and under is going to be. We're going to take a short time out. We'll be back with uh, the Jackson Christian football. King Jewelers is not your typical run-of-the-mill jewelry store. Grover is a certified jeweler with 35 years experience. This isn't just a jewelry store. It's an iconic symbol of love. How far would you go for love? King Jewelers, 16B, Conrad Drive, Jackson. We are still in the first quarter with 424. 28 points have been put on the board, 21 of them by the Eagles, seven by the Vikings. Vikings would like to get a little better field position, but so far Cisco has put through our two kicks into the end zone, and they're kind of hard to return, aren't they? Well, and they Moose, you, are. Moose just texted me and wanted to know what Dobbins has been. We're not – Worried about Dobbins Bennett Moose. They win in 21 20 at halftime. This one's going to come down a little short of the goal line taken at the one. Straight up the middle. This, And now there's a hole you could drive a Mack truck through. And we close on it. And was that Austin Kelly that made the initial hit? I believe it was Austin Kelly. Or and was it? Uh, no, it was Banky. As we can see this replay right I thought it, we'll check it on the replay. Not good coverage this time. We give a hole here. He fakes us. We miss. And now we've got nobody filling that lane. And number 13. That, that, yeah, that's Banky. Cooper Banky. Thank you, Cooper. Good tackle. But they've got great field position. They're best of the night. They're at their own 41-yard line, or 42, actually. And it looks like we're going to get a false start here. Now, and he's checking his armband. So not everybody was on the same same page there and it'll make it a first and 15 from the 37. Chilton Smith manning the left side. Of course, we can flip-flop ours. Caleb Newsom over here on the right outside. And Big Cedric himself wearing 91 and lined down probably is Joey Carr. Craig, one of the linebackers. Kai White, another one of the linebackers. And we see coverage over here because they're going to go slot left. They're checking their armbands. Paul Lay's being called from the side. Bowling, dropping back. And they throw one out here. And good catch and drop. Just it. I thought he hit it. it. Yep. Would have been short of a first down. It'll bring up second down, though. Jack Collins on coverage. Bowling, an outstanding young, young man. And just trying to take his eyes off the ball there before he had it. Brings up second and 15, ball on their own 37. It's second down, as we said, and there will be two receivers here to the left. Got to keep an eye on 17. He's a pretty good receiver. That's Orr in the slot. To the far side, we'll have to check one back in the backfield and a blocking back or H back. Quick out, caught right at the original first down marker, and Carrier will drive him out of bounds after a pickup of about seven, maybe eight. That's right. See the replay out there, and just it's just a good good uh, curl there by who, who would you say that was again? Number eighteen or eighty-one Pike? That's Pike over there. I couldn't tell who he was. Eight, eighteen to seventeen. Now they brought fourteen into the game, which is Eason Wells, a senior. Again, man coverage. One high safety is Easton Jones right now, bowling with no pressure. He's cranked the javelin up. Two people have a chance at. It. We got it though. This Let's looks like Carrier. This. Carrier across the 30, the 35, going to be driven out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. 
And what a job by Trent Carrier. And look at this, didn't take his eyes off the ball for a second. Had, had his man in front of him, and then when they go for the pass, still eyes on the ball, good interception there. And able to get it off the interception, goes 10. Gets right at 20 yards off the interception, 21 even. And see Daniel Green comes out wearing number 85, the 6'6", tight end. He also can play H-back and linebacker. See Roland close to me. Banky is close. Boyd in the backfield. Mosley's going to be split to the far side. A little discussion. they got to change footballs. You play with your own football on offense. Here comes our football. Or they've got one out there, but that's the one that we want to play with. Here's Boyd. He needs – oh, there's a push in the back. Flag, if, if they miss that one, it helped us. I could have seen a penalty. You can't extend your arms like that and push somebody. Let's watch. And, folks, watch this. You'll see what I'm talking about. Watch our blocker. There's the push. Yep. But evidently the referee didn't see it. Boyd with a nice carry spins, as you see, and gets down to the 49. And guess what? That's a first down. Didn't get the uh, sticks moved in time. Boyd unofficially has 42 yards. Send Roland to the left, Banky in the slot. Mosley isolated with bowling. This is a good matchup out here. The guards pull, looking at the little man run. He look at the extra effort, and he is the smallest running back on the field. That's right, but able to get – Hey, well, he's got the Derrick Henry firepower in him. If he, go, if he gets hit, he's get, getting you for at least two more yards. Looks like about three. Now they give him four full yards. So it's going to bring up second and six, the ball on the Fayette Academy, 45-yard line. 21-7 your score with 2.55 to go in the first quarter. Jackson Christian ahead looking to put more. Bank, he's going to change sides. This is not true motion. He's just changing side. And they see Maines picking him up. Going to throw out. This is the rolling, the sure-handed one, and the sure-handed one is going across the 20, down across the 15, and driven out of bounds. And no flag there on that play. Number 10 was wanting the flag there. Let's see what it is, what it is right here. Good pass, number 24, uh, rolling there, and just a good, that's just a good block there, and able to get get some good yardage out of that one. Another first down for Jackson Christian. And my stats are a little off right now. I'm going to have to work on those, get them straight again. Trips to the left, but we're going to Boyd on the handoff. Right behind that guard, puts his hand on him. A guy filtered in behind the guard, got one block. We needed two, but it's still positive yardage. That's right. Let's see where they say his knee first touched the ground. Pick up a four, and sometimes... Some of these referees, the way they do things, uh, backing up like that, it looks like you're fixing to have a penalty call, but there was no laundry on the field. Roland and Banky to the left. They're in a little tighter. So is Mosley, the ball on that right hash mark. Here's the motion to Mosley. It's going to be the two-handed pitch. Mosley needed a block, didn't get it, but and bounced off of a tackle, goes out right at the stake, and it'll depend on the spot, but it should be a first down. Uh, we might have a flag, though, is the only yeah, thing. And did we pull a face mask? I believe. Yes. Or oh, holding, holding. And I believe they had that on number 13 right there, uh, Cooper Banky, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 13 is Banky. Last thing we needed was the penalty. That'll make it. Uh, it'll come from the spot of the foul. And I believe second and 17 is the yep. official spotting on that one. That penalty, uh, you, you want to avoid them. Sometimes it can't be helped. See where O'Bine is up 14 to nothing on uh, Portland right now. That's not right. O'Bine is down 14 to nothing to Haywood. Here's the snap. Gage Boykin got it to Mosley. Mosley can pull away. This guy's going to hold on to his jersey. But it's still going to be a positive catch, and he's driven out of bounds at, what, about the 12? Yeah, look, just look at this as soon as uh, Mosley gets it. First hit at the 23, and then gets at least 12 yards after he's being trying to, trying to be taken down. Still makes it third and five. 
Nice catch, and Mosley, the, the young man defended him, and we should have given him credit. He had a handful of jersey he wasn't going to let go of. That's right. Three receivers to the left of the formation. Tight end to the right of it. In motion, it's a five-out type situation. Linebackers come. Doesn't matter because Daniel Green just took a little – some people would want to call it a post. Small look in, but watch this. Look how Cam Boyd goes out, and that forces the defenders to leave that middle wide open there for number 85, Daniel Green. What a play there by the Eagles. Green here in the first quarter with a 13-yard touchdown pass. And, Daniel, some people ignore him, and that's not a good thing to do because he is dangerous. 127, Green with the TD pass. Cisco on, daily, uh, let's see, yes, daily to hold, Kelly to hold. I don't know why I said daily. That's been doing too many games. You know what <laughs> I'm going to say. It's perfect. It's Zach Cisco. He's that good a kicker. Let's take a timeout on Worthy Road Studios with the Eagles leading 28-7 to in the first quarter. Looking for a new and exciting career? At Jackson State Community College, we offer nationally recognized, top-rated programs designed to greenlight your career for success. With courses available in the health sciences, nursing, computer technology, and much more, your next step towards a career starts here at Jackson State. Learn how Jackson State Community College can greenlight your future at greenlightyourfuture.com. And we are back here with 127 to go, and there's been a ton of scoring. If you like scoring, this is your game. Eagles lead the Vikings 28-7, 127 to go. Zach Sisko, his leg's going to be worn out before it's over. Could probably stand a little rest. 24, Wyatt Morris is back deep for them. We'll see who is up. Sometimes bowling returns kickoff. Sometimes he doesn't. We'll see who else. I want to say Maines is one of the men. This one, it's out of here. It's headed towards the tennis courts. <laughs> and you see the fence is the only thing that helps it from getting to the tennis courts. That's right. Three times out of the four they've had it, they've started on their own 20-yard line, they being the Vikings. Let's see, Middlecoff will be in the backfield, probably at a wing back spot. Cedric is not going out on this series, and he deserves a rest. He's played hard. We'll see who's in the middle for him. Cedric, a tough guy. 53, Hunter Waldrop is in there. Here's the football trying to right side, short yardage. Man, there are a host, including I see Chilton Smith on the bottom. Looked like Wyatt Jones was over there and a bunch of other Eagles. I couldn't exactly see who got the first hit on him, but only stopped him at one yard, looks like. So, Waltrip and Craig also being given credit. So, all those young men participated, introduced themselves, and left their business card. Second and eight, gain of two. Collins with coverage on the outside. Looks like Blake rolling up tight. And he is on Brady Orr, and Orr's a pretty good receiver. Middlecoff switched to the right. Here's their version as a one-man screen. We've got it played pretty good. Blake rolling from behind and Jack Collins in front. Looks like it might be a gain of three right there if that, but screen and that deep receiver, number 17, not able to get the block there on either defenders and just going to be stopped way short. Well played by Roland, and this is – Blake rolling, not Lance. Lance plays offense most of the time. It's third and six. The ball is on the 24, clock running down. The only question is, will Fate Academy let it run down and get a play from the sideline? And I'm betting on they let it run down. Always stay focused. Three, two, one, and to the end of one quarter play, Jackson Christian leads 28 to seven over Fayette Academy. Let's take a timeout. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all.
We offer live webcasting for families. It kind of came out of when so many warriors were going overseas to war. We have learned to offer families more choice that we want to serve our families well and serve our families better. And you see the first graders coming out. They are honoring the Eagle Flag Football League, the kindergarten through third grade league. The kids are divided into teams by their grade and play against each other and flag football teams in the area also. Kindergarten team was announced and we're back to playing action. And uh, looks like he's able to get the first down by uh, just a yard on that one. They did get the first down. First, second, and third grade teams were announced. And we want to compliment them. First down for the Vikings. 11.40, ball closer to the left sideline, the left side of their formation. They've got two wing backs, so a single running back, bowling under center. They give straight ahead, and this time they got good body lean and going to get about three out of that, the running back did. That looked like Maines on the carry then. We'll check it and make sure. It was no Wyatt Morris, actually. So Morris with a, a nice gain there. Pike is the only wide out. And again, some of y'all that used to watch P.A. Pratt's teams up at Crockett County, they would have two wings, one running back. You can run counters, cross bucks, and all kinds of things out of this. And meet people in motion, run the option. Again, they fake straight ahead, bowling keeps it, and that's what you got to have a man assigned to the quarterback. And kind of slung down, uh, Wyatt. Yeah, look, look at this on the tackle. Look at this replay right there. Wyatt Jones just sees him right there after he gets by and is able just to sling him down there right at the 40-yard line. And it's going to be third and short right here, Coach. Third and short, a big play of possession down. Ball's on the 40, same formation with two wings and one setback. And they tried to draw us off, and that time – Great discipline by our defensive line, especially Caleb Newsom, because the dog linebacker's job is to get after you. That's He's right. going to dog you. That's right. They got 10 on the play clock here. They got to get something going. Carrier uh, about five yards off. They send a man in motion to the left. They're going to try the sweep left. Looked like Maines bobbled it a little bit. We're going to drive him back, and it's going to bring up fourth and about Might one and be a half. one. Maybe Ooh. one. Oh, you get it. Forward progress. It is a short one, too. And Eagles played that perfectly there. Line, as soon as the ball was snapped, they all went to that right side and was able to get them down. I can tell you right now, they're going for it. Joey Carr coming in here because uh, Fayette Academy has nothing to lose by going for it right now. They're down 28-7, and a first down here would be a big booster to them. That's right. Wyatt Morris in the backfield. He's a junior and a good hard runner. Bowling could sneak it. He could take a step off and go off the hip of one of the Lyman, fullbacks up tight. Let's see if we stop him. I don't him. think they got if it. If he doesn't spin off, they stopped him. It's going to depend on the spot, though. Everybody's waving. Fayette Academy says they got it. Our guys say no. Darby says no. It really depends on the spot. Do we get a left or right-footed spot? And they put it right at the. Wait a minute. That can't be right. And I, we might want to measure that real quick. Well, you can't. It's the, uh, it's not. The offense could have asked. I, I think we got robbed. I really do. Here's the running back off the left side. He'll get a short gain of about one. But if the stake was right, the football was a full yard behind. A full yard. Because the first down, I remember being at the 43. They put that at the 42. Yeah, one yard gain there for the running back. Uh, folks, go back and watch the replay on Worthy Road Studios' YouTube site, and you will see that that was not the way it was lined up because I'm sitting right on it, and I'm not blind. Pike wide. Carrier's got him, everybody else up tight because it's a double wing, even though it's out of the spread. They're going to run the running back, Mains, and he's going to get some good yards. Corner Mains or Connor Mains. Yeah, let's see what happens to cause Maines to be able to get that. See Cedric Anderson coming back in, Caleb Newsom getting a rest. I also see the big man in there. That's right. You see number five there, uh, Kai Wyatt, able to get 
on that tackle as well. Looked like number five right there on that tackle. Third and five. Football almost equidistant from the hash marks, a little closer to the left. They're going to go with their spread again this time. Keep an eye on Middlecoff, the wing back, and he's lined up his wing back, not an H back. Spread formation. Bowling sends a man in motion. They fake the jet sweep. Bowling keeps it. He rolls, but if the spot is proper. That's one yard short, if that's correct. I think that Gary's going to give us a replay. No, 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 no. It's, it's got to be. It's about a yard and a half. They gave him a positive spot. I will argue the spot with them a little bit. Fourth and one, they're going to go for it. Like I said, they're in a position where, Michael, there's nothing to lose by going for it. Again, they're back under center with the wing tee. And they send a man in motion. When you see the foot, now they got a double blocker. And now they're going to back out. They were hoping we would jump. And they're going to have to call a timeout. As they call a timeout with the Eagles leading 28-7, to let's take a timeout. Great American Sports makes sports an addiction. Located at 125B Old Hickory Boulevard, East in Jackson, we specialize in teen sports for youth leagues, schools, and churches. We can embroider and screen print team uniforms. We also have sports equipment, Under Armour and Adidas clothing, and anything else you need for your teen sports. You can email or call us for all your teen sports needs. Great American Sports, make sports an addiction. We are back here. It's fourth, and to me, it looks like a short one. Now, Michael's got a better look at it than I do this time. But I was right on the other one. There's no way it was a first down, and the film will prove it if you go back and look at it. That's right. And I believe the referee did have a correct spot on this one, just full yard short. Possibly could have been back at the 49 and a half, but they got it at the 49, so it is short of a first down. Okay, they're going to bring – now they've gone to a spread. That gives bowling a little more room to do anything. We're in man coverage with a one-high safety. They're going to send a man in motion like you would, but no jet sweep. They're just going to power it to the left. There's bowling. He's got good yardage and got another first down. And look, look at this replay there. Straight from the get-go, he's not even going to try to give it to anyone else and finds, finds a hole right there about – I'd say probably about a gain of two or three yards. Yeah, Kai White and uh, Joey Carr are two of the three tacklers, but we were outnumbered at the point of attack, and you can't do that. Bowling is having his way with us. We'll get stats, official stats from Greg Armour. I brought my small stat sheets. I can't even read my own writing on it. Slot right, one receiver to the left, H back to the left of the formation they're throwing. Here's pressure. Newsom had him, and he's going to – Go down, and uh, that was Newsom got his hands, but he just couldn't pull him, but he lost his balance. Good rush. That's right. That's a loss of, I believe, close to – almost close to 15 yards, if I'm not mistaken. It's going to be another one of those $2 cab ride deals, 10, 20, about 27, 28 yards. They say 26. We'll live with that second and 26 ball on the 38 of Fayette Academy. But when you've got a running quarterback like Bowler, Bowling, Corbin Bowling, a very fine young sophomore, two receivers to the right with a slot, man coverage, one high. Now they bring the third receiver. They block, they block, they've got better coverage. Here comes the pass. Knocked away by Mosley, but almost caught. That's right. Almost Good coverage. caught. Yeah, was that Easton Wells? Yes, 14. But Mosley broke it up. But you know what? Almost only counts in horseshoes, hand grenades, and atomic bombs. That's right. And just, that was just good, almost perfect coverage there by Mosley. For whom the bell tolls. You heard the bell. It's signaled on third down. Jackson Christian wants to stop. Hey, they, um, Newsom's going to get a well-deserved rest after that great rush he had. The big man himself, Daniel Green, has appeared on the field. And let's see what kind of rush. we got the speed rushers in there right now. Only three rushing. We're going to drop eight. We had a man. Now they throw underneath. It's up to us to tackle now. That's Maines. He's going to get back to about the 49, but there's still about 11 more yards to go. Guarantee you. Looks They're like going to go for it. That's right. And lineman up there just got tripped up. I couldn't, I couldn't see exactly who that was, but they're going to spot him right. Right the, looks like the 49 and a half. 
Fourth and about 14, maybe an inch or two short of 14. Now there's some changes in personnel, so they may be punting after all. I thought they were going to go for it. Now, it could be a short snap to Corbin Bowling. Keep an eye on him. He is the up blocker for Pike. Watch that very carefully. Bowling counting his people, which makes me more suspicious. But at this point, they probably need to snap it and kick it. But watch for the high snap. We're not rushing. It's punt safe. We didn't even have uh, – well, we had Mosley back, but it's not going to get anywhere close to the big man. It's going to come down, what, 22-yard line. That's right. And – Pretty good punt by Pike there, but it looks like Jackson Christian going to get the ball once again, going to try to make it 35 here. And they are going to be 78 yards away from a touchdown, but need a few first downs or either break a big one. Offense will start on the 22, short side of the field to the right of the Jackson Christian offense. And I see Green in there again. Let's see if he goes. He's going to H back. Banky and rolling to the left. Got to be Mosley with Gage Boykin, who's on fire tonight. The pitch to Boyd. Boyd needed to block, didn't get it, but he's still going to get pretty fair yardage. He's going to get about – oh, he may have the first down. I believe so. I believe he got right at 11 yards on that one. He needed to block, and I think we picked a bad spot to block for him, and he still made some good yards. Well, he got some blocks, don't get me wrong, fans, but – uh, we could actually execute a little bit better on that one. Roland and Banky to the left along or to the right with Mosley. And, uh, again, Boyd trying to left side. He's broken one tackle. Bowling's got a shot at him. He spins, and as he pulls away, goes down at about the 42. That's right. A big gain again there by Cam Boyd. and 24 yards, wasn't it, Michael? I believe so. Let's see if I can count it here. There was a great block in there by one of our guards. Oh, yeah. That is number 60. It looked like right at 24 Ty Smith. there. Yeah, Ty Smith with a great block. We'll try to do a little better giving those guards and people some credit because our offensive line, it was actually one of our wideouts missed the block a while ago that would have sprung him. Here's the pitch again. He's outside, gets one block, needed two, and hanging on for dear life to tackle him was Paxton Graves. He's, just, he's becoming unstoppable right now on this drive. Seven-yard gain on that one. And you college scouts watching out there, don't let his size fool you. There was a great NFL running back named Dick Bass, rushed for 1,000 yards several times with the Los Angeles Rams. And the old AFL, Charlie Toller, the human bowling ball, was 5'6 and 200 pounds, and he rushed for 1,000 for yards a couple of times. There were some other small backs like Howard Stevens out of uh, Louisville. And if I had more time, I could give you a bunch of them. Green in the backfield. Gage Boykin steps up. Boyd with him. We pull. We look into the end zone. We've got a man down there. It's a jump ball in that one. Just everybody too tangled up. And no flag on that one. Didn't know if yep. there was going to be or not. Well, good coverage that time and a good effort by Mosley to get up there and uh, looks like both men may have missed time their jump a little bit. Brings up third down and two. We are probably would go for it if we don't lose any yardage. Slot right, H back, pitch. We got to get a, a guy outside. We got the first down, but we can score on this play if we get one more block to this side. But Cam Boyd runs like a fine watch. That's right. And like you said, enough for a first down. Just couldn't get that block down for 80, number 85, Daniel Green. Almost got it, but hey, either way, first down, Jackson Christian. And it is first and 10 at the 28. 204 and counting, wide side of the field to the right. Roland and Banky there. Mosley to the short side as a wide out. Green going out in the flat. He's let go. We're aiming for Green. Green's got it. Take it to the house. What do you have? Touchdown, Daniel Green and Jackson Christian. That's right. And not only that, passing touchdown number four for Gage Boykin, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely. Second quarter score for Green at the 147 mark. Green, what, two touchdown passes tonight. 28 yards on this one. 
And Zach Sisko comes on. Three things have to happen. Good snap, good hold. Zach follows through. Usually that is what happens on our extra points. I understand he has been nominated for a, the Mr. Football kicker. Up there's the bad snap part of it. Zach tries to throw a block, and uh, we throw a pass out there. It gets intercepted. So we won't get the extra point on that one. It'll be 34-7 uh, PAT. Snap did not. And just went right through the hands there, number 11, uh, eight, Austin Kelly. And tried to make a play on it, just couldn't, couldn't get it. Let's take a short time out and come back to more Jackson Christian football on Worthy Road Studios. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. We are back. Remind you about the Great American pregame and postgame show. Remember, Greg Armour will be in here at halftime. Thompson and Smith, your scoreboard sponsor. And I was thinking ahead here, Zach Sisko. Kept from calling him Pike. Pike is the kicker for the other team. Zach, a really fine young man. His brother was Will Sisko, the white great wide out here. Sisko sets him up. Says he's ready and strides towards the goal and the football. Kiss that one goodbye, too. Aaron Judge, eat your heart out. You should hit home runs like he kicks into the end zone. <laughs> Am I being a bad man? Oh, no. You're just saying how good Zach Sisko is at kicking the football. We saw two great kickers last week. I'll give Holsinger from TCA credit. He put a few in the end zone, too. And uh, Zach, of course, had a great game. We are very thankful for his field goals back in the game against, uh, well, the first game of the season. You know, people know what I'm talking about. Carrier's still in there at a defensive back. Why Jones, an outside linebacker. Cedric Anderson back in. I love to see the big man play. Chilton Smith in there. You bring motion. They bring the extra blocker. We've got filtered in behind. We're going to set him up. I think Carrier was down on the bottom, but Wyatt was there. And let's see. I had Jones coming out. He gets blocked, but not number 70, Chilton Smith, and he's able to stop him and, and in time to get Wyatt Jones in there to make the tackle. Yeah, Wyatt finished him. Chilton filtered in behind the lead block. You know, they pull that man in motion. And that brings up second and eight, a gain of two. Ball on there, 22, the Fayette Academy, 22. And don't let the score fool you. This is a young Fayette Academy. They've got some seniors, but they've got some very good young players that are going to get better. They're well coached by a young man that knows fundamental football, and his staff is very good. Now we hand off, or they hand off, trying left side. And I'm going to tell you what, Joey Carr was in there. If he had been in there one step quicker, he might have got him a handoff. Look at there. Yeah, just amazing. Amazing tackle there by Carr, able to get through, and that's what you call. If he wouldn't have got him, that would have been a big play there for Fayette Academy. 50.8 seconds. A timeout has been called with the Eagles leading 34-7. to We're going to take a timeout on Worthy Road. Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. We are back 50.1 seconds now. Michael is not normally a coach. He can play football. He can referee football. You're Fayette Academy, third and nine. You're behind. Do you run it or do you crank the javelin up and throw it? Well, with a 40, 40, I believe 40 second play clock right there, you got to try to make a play on it right here. 
I mean, you might have a good run offense right here, but I don't know if you've got it good enough to run 10 seconds off the clock, try to take it to half. Three receivers to the left, heading towards the sideline, a good throw and catch, and coming That's down. Right. But that would have been my second option right there. Was Orr with the football, and that was a good throw and catch by them. That's right. And just couldn't have put that in a better spot right there. Any more to the left or the right might have had a chance of him being incomplete. Only seven seconds approximately used. 43.8 seconds with it first and 10 on the 32 of Fayette Academy. Wide side to the right, but they're back in the wing tee. Faking, sprinting to his right. Bowling, throws it up in the air. Over through his receiver, 14, and we get a little, I call it rooster fighting. That wasn't a bad one. Everybody got to get a little bump in there. Yeah. And so that, that's going to be second down and only took, that took almost took eight seconds off the clock there. That did take a second and ten, and that's all right. Just don't let anybody get behind you. Coach Darby Palmer and the staff encouraging our defensive backs, don't let them get – we'll play soft and let them catch one in front of us, and then you need to uh, drill them, or as the new term that David and I introduced – and it's not a new term. It goes back to – first time I ever heard it was out of Tom Fan in 1963 but uh, who was Jackson High's head football coach. Two receivers to the right. We're going to have man coverage over here. Looks like Mosley and Carrier running oh, a post over, and then they're going to go short to the wing back, and Mosley comes up and hits him. Now, he's lucky that Mosley hit him in the shoulder pads. That's right. If Mosley had hit him just a little lower, uh, you would have heard, oomph. And look, look at this right here. Mosley, perfect read on it and able just to go to it and – Boom, right there. And then not only that, but you got uh, number five, Kyle Wyatt, with a tackle. And then I believe number 20, or so, someone else from Jackson Christian was able to get him too. Absolutely. Let's take a quick time out here on the Worthy Road Studios Network. At McCoy's Heating and Air, we realize there are more than enough things to worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. With our new 10-year all-inclusive package, your home comfort doesn't have to be one of them. For one low monthly payment, you can purchase a brand new York unit with full maintenance and repair coverage for 10 years with approved credit. No hassle, no stress, just complete coverage for your comfort and convenience. Contact McCoy's Heating and Air at 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com to schedule your free new AC estimate today. Having a, having a fun time here at the field. We're at Jackson Christian's home. It's senior night. They've also honored the elementary players, and those young men play for fun, you know, in the flag football league, and they have some other teams coming in from the area. And uh, most of the players on this team got a start in that league. Some didn't. Some have come in here later in middle school or like their freshman year. But uh, it's a fun league and well coached and run in a good Christian manner. Okay, third and ten. You're the coach again, Michael. Hey, with being third and ten, you got to go for something big here. You got to at least get a mi play midfield. A little confusion in the backfield. Bowling sprinting left, overthrown, and, and oh, almost Jack. intercepted. And Jack Collins would love another chance at that That's one. That's right. This is what you want to have as, Fade, as the Fade Academy Vikings right here, but you got to get that pass down. It's a hard pass to make, and – you got to remember, Bowen's only a sophomore, so he's going to have time to get that play down here in the next couple of years. Yeah, at fourth and ten, probably a punting situation with it. 17.5 seconds left. Uh, and let's see, looks like Pike's in there. But you got to remember, Bowling can run it or throw it, and he's a dangerous runner. He's got a good arm. He's just a sophomore. The man behind him, Pike, is just a sophomore. We're going to send – we're really in punt safe. Don't know that we'll even give much rush. Mosley back in deep safety. That – Snap is floating, and I'm going to tell you what, eventually, if it and this one's going to bounce, takes a Fayette Academy bounce across the 35 down to the 34-yard line, and the clock is going to stop at 7.1 seconds. Let's just say the clock is arrested. It doesn't have a gun on it, but it is arrested at 7.1. 34-7. And if you're Jackson Christian right here, do you try to get – a big throw downfield, call a timeout, and then set up Cisco for a kick, or do you try to go all the way here? I don't know because Darby uh, can play it straight and you just sit on it right here, or you've got the strong-arm quarterback. I know what would happen if they were about 
11 yards or 12 yards closer. But we come out in a spread showing no signs of sitting on the football. And it looks like Fayette Academy has called a timeout. They call a timeout. We're going to call a timeout. We'll be back after this. At Alive Hydration Drip Spa, we offer top-of-the-line IV nutritional therapy, which has a wide variety of health benefits. From immune system boosters and skin care, fatigue, energy, and even hangover relief, you can be sure we have an IV blend that's right for you. All of our blends are administered by one of our experienced nurses in a spa setting to ensure you leave feeling re-energized and refreshed. Give us a call or visit our website to book your appointment today. We have what it takes to make you feel alive again at Alive Hydration Drip Spa. We come back with Jackson Christian leading, but Michael has you a hot flash and a score. That's right. This determines number four seed for the middle division, possibly Jackson Christian's opponent for next week. At the half, Columbia Academy is up 7 to nothing right now over Grace Christian out of Franklin. And that, again, that is determined the final spot for that uh, division right there. And they're like us. They win. It's all over there, the four seed. Right. Franklin, uh, Franklin Grace had to win. Okay, we have it. Seven seconds left. You almost got to go for the whole gumball. Do we run a safe play? The middle linebacker's coming. Boyd can sprint right, looks back left, throws over the shoulder to Boyd. And Boyd with a great catch. Can he get by the one man? And barely pulls him out of bounds as time runs out. A great catch and run by Boyd. And I believe they're trying to say it's one second left. Now, they are, we're asking for the one second. Our team and our coaches have done it now. Trust me, the referees aren't going to put any time, even though I'm going to say we're right. I believe. And uh, the, that's just the way some things happen. And I'm going to bite my tongue a little bit before I pin you has on this one. But anyway, with time expired and it is halftime, Jackson Christian leading 34 to 7. We'll remind you Columbia Academy is leading 7 to nothing in their contest. We'll take a timeout and come back with more on Jackson Christian and Worthy Road Studios Network. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Home furnishings, appliances, bedding, and so much more. Kaufman's at the Bypass and Oil Well Road in Jackson. Furnishings for every room in your home. Custom upholstery options, too. And our fully stocked warehouse helps prevent supply chain delays. Kaufman's, for your life. At Arrington Funeral Directors, we accept all prearranged funerals. So you may have prearranged your funeral in this town, with another funeral home, or even in another state. But we accept all prearranged funerals because we're here to serve families. Buying a home is a major milestone, and at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Thompson & Smith the area's premier independent insurance brokerage has been serving families and businesses in the region through its founding companies since 1927. With their many insurance company partners, Thompson & Smith provides insurance products for family, home and auto, contractors, retailers, restaurants, manufacturers, medical and dental clinics as well as any other business or organization seeking quality coverage, risk management expertise and customer-focused service. Call them today to discuss your insurance needs. At Lonnie Kyle Ford, we now give you a warranty for life on the engine and transmission. That's right, a warranty for life at no cost to you. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage, but it's only at Lonnie Kyle Ford and Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. 
tired of being seen and not heard? At Lifestyle Vision, we believe in patient-centered quality eye care for West Tennessee, which is why we are locally owned and operated. Come see us Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, or schedule an appointment anytime online. Lifestyle Vision, where compassion meets commitment. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Automotive. Van Drive, Jackson. Hey, this is Chuck Walker with Southeastern Termite and Pest Control. If you live in West Tennessee, you have a need for the services we offer. We treat for all types of pests, including bed bugs, brown recluse spiders, and other hard-to-treat pests. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to encapsulate a crawl space. Give us a call to hear how to achieve the same thing and save thousands. Southeastern Termite and Pest Control can handle all of your termite and pest control needs, wood fungus and moisture barriers, real estate closing letters, and so much more. Southeastern, 731 660 1052. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Automotive Van Drive, Jackson. Looking for a new and exciting career? At Jackson State Community College, we offer nationally recognized, top-rated programs designed to greenlight your career for success. With courses available in the health sciences, nursing, computer technology, and much more, your next step towards a career starts here at Jackson State. Learn how Jackson State Community College can greenlight your future at greenlightyourfuture.com. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. He shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Thompson & Smith, the area's premier independent insurance brokerage, has been serving families and businesses in the region through its founding companies since 1927. With their many insurance company partners, Thompson & Smith provides insurance products for family, home and auto, contractors, retailers, restaurants, manufacturers, medical and dental clinics as well as any other business or organization seeking quality coverage, risk management expertise and customer-focused service. Call them today to discuss your insurance needs. We are back and I am very pleased to announce the world's greatest statistician and pretty dadgum good human being has just walked in wearing his white Eagles hat, dapperly attired in his black, I don't want to call it a hoodie, but I guess it is a hoodie, and uh, got Eagles football on there. Gary, uh, Greg Armour is with us, and Greg, what a first half. Uh, did you? How many pencils did you go through? Well, I, I only went through one, but it... It was, I had to let it cool off a little bit. It, boy, that's hotter than that $2 pistol I'm always talking about. I'm going to let you choose tonight. You want to do our stats first or theirs? I'm going to do our stats first. All right, for us, we had seven first downs in the passing department. Gage Borkin attempted eight, completed six for 145 yards and three touchdowns. Leading receiver, uh, Daniel Green had two catches for 41 and two touchdowns. Jay Mosley had two catches for 31 and one touchdown. In the rushing department, we rushed 14 times for 152 yards. A leading rusher, uh, 
Cam Boyd had 11 carries for 72 yards. Jay Mosley had two for 54. And Wyatt Jones had one for three yards and a touchdown. We did not punt. We had two penalties for 15 yards. We kicked off five times and put the ball in the end zone four of those times. That's very good stat, Zach Cisco. Uh, always, and we had the big interception on those that you'll get to in a minute. Before you, you go into that, we're leading here. Everything's falling into place. Matter of fact, we win. It doesn't matter what happens in Memphis. USJ is ahead. So is TCA. Middle Tennessee, Columbia Academy's up 7 nothing is the score we were given at halftime. That's right. That's what, that's what I heard a while okay. ago. I wanted to make sure. See, Greg, uh, I feel better if Greg says that's the right thing. Now, uh, Fayette Academy fans, and we welcome you to the broadcast. You will find right here, I know you got a good statistician, but the this is the man, this is the official stats, and here he is with yours. All right, for Fayette Academy, they had six first downs. They attempted 12 passes, completing five for 31 yards with one interception. They uh, rushed the ball 20 times for 70 yards. Leading rusher is the quarterback, number uh, 10. He had seven carries for 20 yards and number 24 he had eight for 14 they punted three times for about a 25 yard average and they kicked off two times and they had two penalties for eight yards and they just had the one drive the first one was their drive they went 80 and i believe it was mains that scored the touchdown or was it morris it was mains that mains. scored okay, number, I was number, right. number three number three mains and uh, other than that it's 34-7, and for the folks that don't know, I'm going to let the official statistician back it up. That is not a miss by Zach because, first of all, it's a bad snap and hold. That, that is not a miss by Zach. Yeah. And coming into this game, you know, uh, Zach had only missed one. I think, looking back, I think he's got 45 out of 46 yep. extra points. And what we had, the field, one field goal that kind of and he missed went one field wacky goal. doodle, as he's, I call it. He's six out of seven. Yeah. And he's got uh, 25, not counting tonight, he's got 25 touchbacks, counting tonight, 29. And I do know that he has been nominated by several people I found out today for uh, the Mr. Football kicker. I think Cam has been nominated by some. Now, that doesn't mean they automatically make the final six, folks, but – uh, let's see, somebody else on our team got nominated. Mm. It, it either had to be Jalen or... I, I haven't heard that. I haven't. So I, I haven't and, and I apologize, so I people. Say. I didn't write it down. It was given to me uh, at lunch today. Then it was given to me. Nomination. Now, nominations didn't end until 6 o'clock tonight. That's correct. And uh, looks like things are settling down for next week. Yeah, we just got to come out and just play our style of football and, you know, limit them to the big runs. They've got a good running quarterback. Yeah, they really do. And we had trouble tackling the young man at tailback some too. Yeah. And uh, But we have done some things better because I've seen them in the wing. I call it the double wing T. They haven't run that all that much. They've run it enough this year, but they like to either be under center and spread things out and try to create lanes for uh, bowling to run. You know, they had 59 yards in the first quarter and yeah. only 11 rushing in the second quarter. So we, you know. But the defense played with a vengeance. Anybody stick out as far as number of tackles? or Have we spread it around? We spread good? it around pretty, pretty much. Uh, Wyatt Jones, uh, unofficially, I had him with five. Five. And you can see Wyatt all. Saw Chilton make penetration a whole lot. Yeah. And that, a lot of people don't realize this young man almost didn't get to play this year. I thought it was a nice touch that we let Presley – Snap that football. What a fine young man yes. he is. Yes. And uh, I felt like he was, matter of fact, I know he was a college prospect because I had talked to a couple of colleges that had their eye on him for the future. But uh, unfortunately, sometimes injuries, but he's a smart young man. Yes, He'll he be is. very successful in life. And, of course, Carl, Carson Holt not playing this whole, whole year. He's had some surgeries and stuff done. Uh, otherwise, and other than Lucas uh, Witherspoon, Lucas is still out, and we need to get him healthy. He's uh, for a freshman. He plays hard. That's right. He really does. And uh, great, great offensive uh, performance. Your thoughts on the first half performance? Well, you know, we just uh, we took that that opening kickoff, and we you know we just drove down the field and uh, and and scored with passing and running. Yeah. You know, of course, we had a good uh, 
get, had a good return by, by Mosley. Mosley took the kickoff and returned it 67 yards. He's capable. If yeah. he had gotten one more block, uh, I saw where he got slowed up. And uh, then he had another one he could have scored on. But the guy grabbed two hands full of jersey yep. where it rolls. He, he got 32 on another, right? He, he really does. I thought that Roland had a good catch. Banky thought we had him on, on the slant or the post across the field. We, we got them. You know what? We got five guys that can catch the football. That's correct. Daniel yes. Green looks great. Yep. And what do you do with a guy 6'6"? Six, six? We could even go in the end zone and play jump ball with him. That's correct. And it seems like one night he did go in the end zone, post it up for a touchdown. And uh, Gage Borkin, you know what, not just this game, not just the last one. After the USJ game, Gage has played with a vengeance. Yes, he has. And I'm proud of him. Defense is getting better. The, uh, Caleb had a good rush and causing a problem for their quarterback. And uh, we, we have done some things good. Anything you think the fans need to know right now? Now we just have to continue with our defense and offense the way we've been playing in the first half and just take it half at a time and, you know, finish this game out. Absolutely. And, of course, folks, y'all don't realize how Greg helps with the middle school as a coach. He uh, is a coach and keeps stats for the high school. And I thought I saw you doing a bunch of hard work when the uh, elementary, the fifth and sixth grade team was playing. Well, I kind of come out sometimes and help set up yeah. stuff, but, you know. It's a great place to be, Jackson it is. Christian yes, it School. Is. It's a fine school. And we love it. We train young people to be better people and better Christians, and uh, what a great education you get here. Greg, I always like to give you a final statement because, like I said, I, and I believe everything I've told you, this is one of the finest men I know, and we could use a few more Greg Armors. Well, thank you, Joe. I just think, you know, that we've got to come out, and defense has just got to put their foot in the ground and stand their ground. And offense has just got to keep on plugging like they did, did in the first half. We need another touchdown in the clock will run. We're not? Yes, that's right. Another touchdown in the clock yep. will run. Yep. Now, we got to stop them. They get the football first. That's correct. Michael Holdem, a good coach. He and his staff, they'll make adjustments. But yes. we're going to make some, too. Yes, we are. That's a good thing. Greg, appreciate you as always. And I'm envious. David, he gets to do this when he's here all the time. And But Greg's an old friend and also a trusted statistician. And I don't trust anybody but his and i'll trust mine next over the rest of the people i'm number two we're going to thank him for coming in we're going to take a time out we'll be back with jackson christian football after this Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. Downtown is thriving, and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. If you work outside or in a facility with no AC, or you're just struggling with this year's heat wave, it can really take a toll on your body and health. At Live Hydration Drip Spa, we can help you recover with our Beat the Heat special for only $59. Call or visit us online today to set your appointment. At McCoy's Heating and Air, we realize there are more than enough things to worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. With our new 10-year all-inclusive package, your home comfort doesn't have to be one of them. For one low monthly payment, you can purchase a brand new York unit with full maintenance and repair coverage for 10 years with approved credit. No hassle, no stress, just complete coverage for your comfort and convenience. Contact McCoy's Heating and Air at 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com to schedule your free new AC estimate today. Back at halftime with Jackson Christian leading. Michael and I are going to take some time out and let Adrena Hicks show her skills with the replay. She's got you some dandy ones. If you want to send ugly letters and notes, send them to me because I almost forgot to get the replays. 
And we will get those up. Gary and Adrena will make the adjustments, and you're going to see some of the finest work you ever want to see here. With us leading, us being the Eagles over the Vikings, 34-7. to And uh, here comes the Mitchell's replay. Well, first of all, you got to see all the little cheerleaders out there, too, and we need to talk about that. That's right. Here we go. There's Wyatt Jones' <clears throat> touchdown. What a great run. Why was he even touched then? I, he I don't was, think so. I didn't every, see anybody. Everyone thought Cam Boyd was the was the no. running back right there, and then surprise, Wyatt Jones in the end zone before anyone knows it. And that's where some people talk about faking people out of certain garments. There's the little cheerleader again, another replay. Boykin at quarterback, Boyd in the backfield with him. They fake to him. Oh, here it comes. You want to learn how to dance right here? Watch Jalen Mosley. Here comes the speed. This is why the big colleges are looking at Jalen. He's just a sophomore touchdown Mosley. Whoa. Uh, what do you think? Uh, that was that was good right there. Able to fake him out off the screen pass and able to get a easy touchdown out of that. And again, Boykin looking looking towards the right side, lofts it up in the air. And Jalen Mosley just ran a perfect route, drifted get away from the cornerback touchdown. That's right. And that's why Jalen Mosley's uh I believe I said third or fourth in uh the class and touchdowns right now. Nobody to touch Daniel Green. Boyd running uh, the little A-B circle route, and that's an old term from back in the Green Bay Packers and Vince Lombardi days. Daniel Green wide open. Here comes another one. You see Boykin, we're overloaded to the left. Boykin's going to run the safety valve, and they're going to find Daniel Green again rumbling in for a score. So Daniel, Daniel Green and uh, Jalen Mosley, two touchdown passes each right here. Yeah. Or here. two touchdown receptions, excuse two, me. Two receptions, and uh, uh, Mosley, I think, has one, and Green has two on that. Some great results, and, folks, you think of Darina Hicks for that. And Coach Joe and Michael will have nothing to do with those good replays coming to you. We've got the teams coming back out with about 32 seconds, and, Gary, I'm going to gamble and say that we need to – Appraise the people of one of our fine sponsors and take a time out. This is how we Friday night. How do you Friday night? This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. No matter how you Friday night, you always win at Kaufman. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. We are back. The two teams will get a few moments to warm up. Vikings will get the football first. Eagles will come out and try to hold them. Uh, we've got some scores here. Michael will get you caught up on some of them, and we're having to just search around because uh, we got all kinds of paper, and most of it's mine because we had so many festivities. Uh, there will be a replay of the little cheerleaders and the halftime band performance set up on Worthy Road Studios YouTube. That's right. But as far as the score updates, of course, as we mentioned before, the half end of Columbia Academy up 7 nothing over Grace Christian out of Franklin. That is determined the fourth and final spot for the middle division. Uh, for the Class 2 single A. Uh, but determining that region championship, it's Nashville Christian and D.C. Donaldson Christian Academy. Nashville Christian is up 28-7 to over Donaldson Christian right now. And, again, like we said, that is for the region championship. The winner of that is most likely going to be on the side of Jackson Christian's bracket, if I'm not mistaken, uh, looking at that. Uh, Jackson Christian, if they end up getting the two seed, they will be on the same side. And regardless, if we get the three seed, they'll still be on the same side as National Christian or DCA, the winner of that game. And as far as the other stuff goes, we have uh, some rivals of JCS playing tonight. Trinity Christian up 28-7 to over FACS. And Trinity Christian, uh, they have locked up a playoff berth. But to see where they get tonight, they need to win this game. If they win, they get third. And if they lose and Fayette Academy wins, then they will be in fourth. So a lot at stake here for Trinity Christian. I believe we said USJ was up 42 to nothing at the half. Yeah, that game was over early. Um, Harding Academy hasn't won a game. They're rebuilding their program. Kendall, the coach there, the young man that played so well for Lexington High School and then the University of Memphis, he just got the job this year, and he's got a rebuilding task. But he had them looking better the last time I saw them. And when they played us, we kind of – 
Um, you know, old marble shooters would say we laid a fluky on them. That's but right. uh, I don't know what that means in marble shooting, but <laughs> that means you're doing a good job, evidently. But uh, they're getting better. And anything out of uh, – some people are interested in what the Haywood Tomcats are doing tonight, even though they're going to win, folks. I can tell you that right now. Let's see. We, well, at halftime, Haywood is up 34 to nothing over the Obion County uh, Rebels, I believe their name is. Yes. And uh, other than that, if you keep on going in that division, Union City up on Huntington 14 to 6. Uh, Peabody, which is another uh, Worthy Road Studios broadcast, they are winning at West Carroll 33 to nothing. South Gibson 21-7 over Crockett. You got Milan 35-0 right now over Northside. Westview 41-0 over Houston County. Lake County 46-0 over Greenfield. Dyersbury 21-0 over Ripley. And at Region 6, McKenzie up on McEwen 14-0. Parsons losing to Lewis County 7-0. And other than that, that's really about the only close ones we got. And then we got South Fulton 12-6 against Gleason. Dresden 42 to nothing against Hollow Rock Brewston. So, as far as that, it's the only close ones from around here that we have got as of right now. Uh, and still no update from any of the other schools. Like, let's see, I believe that was the only ones from West Tennessee. And uh, Nashville Christian still up 28 to 7, started the second half there against Donaldson Christian. And, Coach, I believe he's trying to get your attention. Oh, there, yeah. Look at there. And, uh, yes, we just announced 28-7. Thank you, though. That is the you know, one of the great people that help us out sometimes, Grant Boykin and uh, Nashville Christian. That I believe that, uh, no, that puts them in our bracket because they'll be the number one seed right. on this side. USJ will be the number one seed on the other side. Right. And, and the- we're kind of hoping that uh, we can meet some folks that are familiar to us in the championship game. But they're right. also hoping for certain things, too. There are a lot of schools like that. Zach Cisco to kick off. I see the coaching staff making sure we got the right numbers, a few final instructions. The clock says 17.1. They'll take that off and put um, 12 minutes up there. If we score another touchdown without them scoring, it will go to a running clock. But we've got to hold. And remember, they have usually have very good special team efforts. They had the good efforts against USJ and some against TCA. They're going to send back Wyatt Morris, who is always dangerous. We'll try to check some of the up people. And I see Paxton Graves wearing number five up here short. I don't think Zach Sisko is going to kick it short, though. And uh, no wind to speak of or none appreciable. Flag is holding pretty steady out there. Just a little slight moving. And uh, thank Greg Armour for straightening my stats out. This one goes high up in the air. Usually that means it's coming down short. They let it hit and bounce, but it bounces right back to the receiver. And there is main shot out of a cannon. And now Zach Sisko got to knock him out of bounds or he's going to score. And tackled by the kicker there. Yeah. Now, yes, and uh, I'm going to tell you what, you're going to see this, and you're going to see where our lanes break down. It's lack of of staying in your lanes and look at the hole that forms. Now, they do a good job blocking. But see, the hole's already there. That's right. And Morris is quicker than we think he is, and uh, we're trying to jump at him and reach at him. Cisco does a good job uh, and gets him out of bounds. Matter of fact, solid tackle. Now, Zach used to be a wide out at one time. But you know what that means? That means they've got the football in our territory. And on our own 32, it's first and 10. They're in the double wing tee. Quarterback under center, one wide out. They send a man in motion, and you can give on the dive or keep, and it's a, a read. He does read that. It looks like Joey Carr had a pretty good play, uh, but they still good body lean by Corbin Bowling. He gets about two or three out of that. That's right. And not only Joey Carr able to help, on, help out on that one, but it was also Caleb Newsom able to help bring him down as well. Absolutely. Caleb plays the dog linebacker. I like to say that word, dog linebacker. Pike out here wide by himself, covered by Carrier. You've got two wingbacks. One of them is Middlecoff. The other one is Orr. Of course, you've got a one tight end formation because you've got a wide out. Crockett County ran it with two tight ends. Splits are tight. Now, there's one they made the hole, and their runner getting good yardage across the 25 down to about the 24. And look, look at the replay here, and... It's just able to find that small hole right there. 
And he's going to get, looked like maybe six or seven yards. He drove us back, and that brings up a big third and three, and they're in four-down territory. They're not going to kick the field goal. They will use all four downs. Ball on the 25-yard line, wide side of the field to the right, staying with the wing tee or the wing double wing, if you want to prefer to call it that. Looks like Maine's in the backfield. And they're going to give, and here's 17, which is Orr with the football, and he may lose a yard. That's right. Good tackle there by Jalen Mosley. And let me make sure that was Mosley. It did look like, yep. Mosley with support from Caleb Newsom. Mosley wasn't going to let go then. Fourth and four. Ball is on the 26 wide side to the right. They're going to go for it. I think they're going to stay with the double wing formation, quarterback under center. Vine runner himself. I look for him to fake, although uh, Maines has good speed out of that tailback spot in the double wing. And they fake to him, sprinting out to his left, trying to throw, and looks like they're going to get the first down. And it's going to be right at the 20-yard line, so that's just about a yard, yard good for a first down. And that makes – their quarterback, six out of 13 on the night. He has thrown an interception. You'll get final official stats from Greg Armour. I tried to straighten mine out at halftime, and I'll be honest, I've been using a smaller sheet, and you can't read my chicken scratching. First and 10 on the Jackson Christian 20, wide side to the right. Pike out there wearing 81, single covered with a one high safety. They send a man in motion, they just give up the middle. And I'm going to tell you what, they got a good hole and popped it because Maines hits it quick. That's right. So that might bring up second and five, or possibly second and four. Now, you want to hold them out of the end zone because you can get a running clock. If they score, then that would reduce it down to a 20 point lead, and it would take, uh, it would really take two scores to get it back where it was. Great kickoff return, though, that time by Morris. Uh, we didn't fill the lanes right, left a hole that you could drive a Mack truck and run a Buffalo through. Here's a man in motion. They're going to try the left side. Maines again. Maines is breaking tackles, and he's going to carry it down to around the four or five yard line and another first down. And you can see the player out there just able to find not – not a lot of big holes in the Jackson Christian offense, but every every one that there is, he's finding them right now. And they're that and they're outnumbering us at the point of attack. We're not adjusting to motion right now. I'm sure I can see the brain trust talking about that right now. It'll be first and goal. Eight oh eight and counting, taking a lot of time, but they still got about six seconds or less. They're going to send a man in motion to the right. It's coming to the right because they're going with the running back. And this time we get some penetration. That's and right. And a whole host of eagles or a flock of eagles. Joey Carr in there. There's some other young men. And look at this right here. They got this ball off with one second left to go on the play clock. And you see Newsom and Carr out right there and then Number five. That's Kai White. Kai White. And I thought Mosley did a pretty good job of setting this corner that time. So a loss of four. Ball's on the nine-yard line. Second goal from the nine. Ball in the middle of the field. And we'll split it a little bit this time. We're running back back there. They give to Maines. And, boy, he's trying to make some hay while the sun shines. But great job of stringing it out and finishing him off. That's right. Might get up to the eight. Jack Collins, they give credit to. Eli Craig. I thought I saw one more of our young men in there, but we want to try to give everybody credit. This is a big play. Third and seven, a gain of two. Wide side of the field to the right. That's where Pike comes. Also looks like Orr is coming that way. Middle cough is going to, it'll be a true trips formation this time. Trips right. Tight end is to the left of the formation. One running back 
with bowling, and they're going to fake. Bowling's going to keep. Bowling's got yardage, and it's going to be a short fourth and two. Looks like maybe fourth and one. That's right. Let's go. And no one on the quarterback on that option play. Well, I think our linebackers took the false step they wanted to, and there was a hole, and we didn't scrape into the hole. So it's fourth and two. Big decision time. You throw it, you run it. If I'm Fayette Academy, I'm probably running it, but bowling very talented. Short side of the field is to the left. They're going to send Pike over there. They're going to try to spread us out a little bit so we got less help on him. Or, and we'll see who comes with him over to this side. Orr and Wells at wide outs. Now there's confusion. Jackson Christian, oh, that's going to be Fayette Academy, is going to take the timeout. And with it fourth and two, let's take a short timeout here on Worthy Road Studios. Downtown is thriving, and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Home furnishings, appliances, bedding, and so much more. Kaufman's at the Bypass and Oil Well Road in Jackson. Furnishings for every room in your home. Custom upholstery options, too. And our fully stocked warehouse helps prevent supply chain delays. Kaufman's, for your life. We are back fourth and two. Ball on the left hash mark. Michael, what are you running right here? I'm going to let you coach again. You did good earlier. Yeah, with fourth and two, it's almost too close for a pass play but too far from a run play you're at, at odds here if you got if you got a good receiver on the outside don't stack only stack him one stack the other receivers on the other side and let him go one-on-one -on -one with your best corner right there but even then with Jalen Mosley that's not not necessarily the best option either one man they got to block is Chilton Smith they got to block our outside linebackers too if they go outside here's bowling sprinting right looking in the end zone throws and no good. We have held on downs. And I believe he might be injured on that one. I hope he's not. Yeah, and then look right here. You see 14 go on the out route. And number 10, Bowling, gets it. And looked like he might have landed right on his shoulder there, unfortunately. And that is Eason Wells, a very fine player. Eason is a senior. Here come the Eagles first and 10, 98 yards away from pay dirt. They just want to get a couple of first downs and get out of their end zone. Remember, we do not go under center. Bowling goes under center some, and he plays in the spread or the pistol some. Boy, can your quarterback. He gives to Boyd. Boyd trying to get him. Look at the little man go. Good block there by Mosley. Mosley and Boyd block quite well for each other, and it's going to be first and 10 for the Eagles. And yeah, look at this right here. You see Mosley with that first block there against number three, caused separation between him and Boyd, and then that good block there against Pike, and it allows Mosley to get, I believe, 23 yards off of that play, Coach. And I believe that's our ninth first down. If Boyd got 23, he's still short of 100. He's at 95. First and 10 for the Eagles on their own 25. A little motion. We fake the pitch to... And here is the little man rumbling and rolling over people. He'll have eight pretty tough yards, maybe nine. Looks like about eight. That's right. And didn't really fool a lot of people on the pit on the fake pitch right there, but Cam Boyd's still able to get really good yardage out of it. Well, you archive that and come back with it. Looks like Banky and Roland. This is Lance Roland to this side. Two backs in the backfield. Good time. Let's see. It's out here for Banky. He's got it at about the 46. Goes out of bounds at the Fayette Academy, 42. And look at this. Gage Boykin might be one of the best quarterbacks we have seen this year in the western Tennessee area, but look at this. I mean, you can't ask for better placement than that right there to Banky right there. Oh, that's right. That's putting the ball where nobody but Banky could get it. It's another first down for the Eagles, 10 on the night. Have we got Boykin's stats as of? Uh, he is seven for nine unofficially, and I did not get all the yardage. We know he's got three touchdown passes, though. Here's Mosley, the pitch to him. I told you they'd come back with that, and he's going to get good yardage. He's got the first down. He's across the 
25, down across the 20, and only a good tackle from a couple of Vikings. And another Mitchell's body shop replay here. You see him with the pitch, and then just finds the hole. You can't, you can't ask for any better offense than that. Absolutely. He looked like Pulliam, one of the tacklers. I did not catch the young man's number. My apologies to him because these kids want to know. Another first down for the Eagles. They're 11th. Now, if they score on this drive, there's the handoff to Boyd. Dancing, running, gaining yardage, getting down inside the 10. And we'll see. We'll let you tell where the placement is. And you see Cam Boyd there on the replay. He gets that first block, and there's – wasn't a lot of places to go after that, but still able to find two or three yards after contact there. Yeah, Joey Carr and Smith cleared him a little bit of hole there. That was Waldron on the tackle. That brings up second and one. Ball is on the nine. We can pick up a first down. They send Green to the left. Two backs in the backfield. One of them an H back. Here comes Boyd. Boyd running, moving like that fine Swiss watch. Give him six nine-yard touchdown. Cam Boyd, and that should set off the – running clock. That's right. Look here, you got number seven, Wyatt Jones, that first block there, and then you have number 60 with that second block and able to get uh, Boyd enough time to get into the end zone. Good job, Eagles, on that play. Yeah, Boyd with the nine-yard touchdown run. Zach Sisko on, and we had one of our few miscues this year with the snap hold. Kelly to hold, Austin Kelly, the backup quarterback. The kick is up. That one's good. He lost it for you. And the Eagles have taken a 41-7 lead. We'll come back with more Jackson Christian football on Worthy Road Studios. At Alive Hydration Drip Spa, we offer top-of-the-line IV nutritional therapy, which has a wide variety of health benefits. From immune system boosters and skin care, fatigue, energy, and even hangover relief, you can be sure we have an IV blend that's right for you. All of our blends are administered by one of our experienced nurses in a spa setting to ensure you leave feeling re-energized and refreshed. Give us a call or visit our website to book your appointment today. We have what it takes to make you feel alive again at Alive Hydration Drip Spa. We are back here. It's 41-7, Jackson Christian with the lead over Fayette Academy. Now, it should be a running clock after this. And because uh, uh, with touchdowns, they, they will stop it here early. But uh, the new rule this year is a 30-point lead. Last year it was 35. Now, I've got to read up before basketball, see if they've dropped it to 30 in high school. Now, that's National Federation doing that. So let, we will see what's happening. Zach Sisko to kick off. And I'm sure that uh, they will send their good people back there. They always do. They do a good job with it. Here's the kick. Heading back, 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 right at the goal line. They said it got it about two inches inside. The middle return by Mains. And this time, a nice solo tackle. That time by Trent Carrier. We stayed in our lanes a little bit better. But I got a feeling Coach Palmer, Coach Bullard, Riker, all of them, Phillips, they're going to work on kickoff coverage this week. That's right. And you see the replay you're out there and a little bit of a late block right there and then 56 just couldn't get to him but is able to be brought down by couldn't see who that was. Number 22, I believe. That's right. That's Trent Yeah, Carter. that's Trent, Trent Carrier. Or Carrier. My, my yep. apologies for him. Eli Craig was hustling down there himself. It's first and 10 on the 24-yard line. Carrier's got coverage out here and they've gone back to the slot left with motion they fake the jet sweep get the extra blocker out there big cedric almost had him but then he ducks in and it's going to be a good gain across the 35 to about the 31 and we're going to get a replay here and almost took too long on the handoff there well if cedric gets him right there but if you know about that if ifs and buts were candy nuts we'd all have a merry christmas But good effort by Cedric, and the team got there. We've got to get there a little quicker. Got to scrape into the holes a little quicker. And uh, you don't want to relax too much now. Okay, Carrier with coverage. Blake Rowland has the coverage on the slot, man. The H-back shifts sides. They're going to give 
two, well, if they fake tomorrow, if they fake here, is bowling. He's got good yardage across the his own 45 down to about the 46, where two of our young men drive him back. That's that right. looked like Roland and who, 34? 34 is Brooks Goff in there, just a 10th grader. And you see bowling right there, just able to get past the defenders. And good job there by number, who would you say that was, number – uh, we had Bo, uh, had uh, Goff, and uh, now I forgot who the other tackler was. Looked like Blake Rowland might have been <coughs> yeah, one Blake of them. Yeah, Blake Rowland was Blake, there. Blake Rowland, good job for not letting up after being uh, yeah. not able to take him down the first time. And here we go. Kyle Christensen almost got him. but K uh, Caleb had him first. Kyle almost finished him off, and Caleb fell back in there and tackled him from behind. Somebody came up from the front, though. That's right. And you don't want to know what makes a good 7-1 and one team. Players, even if you don't make the tackle, players get behind you ready to make that tackle when you don't. And, you know, Wyatt Morris gives you fear when you see him running. He's had some good runs. And, of course, Morris is just a junior. Going to face him again next year. We will know, not know whether we go there or they come here. His schedule will change up after football. They'll get new – there's a good fake overthrow, and this one's picked off. It could be a pick six, depending on a block. Going all the way. He's done it once. He's done it again. That was Jack Johnson wearing number 88, the old outfielder from the baseball team. That's right. Look at this right here. Not a bad pass, but just over, lit, oversailed it just a little bit, and that allows Jack Collins big run to the end zone. I believe he got about – 51, 52 yards off of that interception return. Jack Collins scored at about the 22nd mark because we do have a running clock. It will run during this extra point. Jack Collins with the INT. It looks like it's not going to run during the PAT. Well, they finally stopped it. It actually ran about 10 seconds off. I was watching it when it did that, and they finally stopped it. 11.6, Zach Sisko on, Austin Kelly to hold. The snap is good. The kick is up. The kick is good. And Jackson Christian has taken a 48-7 to lead in the third quarter. We're going to take a timeout and come back with more exciting Jackson Christian Eagle football. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way, peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre-owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. This is how we Friday night. How do you Friday night? This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. No matter how you Friday night, you always win at Kaufman. Scoring barrage here, 55 points already scored in this contest. And actually, Fayette Academy had a great drive while ago and threatened on fourth and two. And our defense held. Uh, it was an incomplete pass, but Zach Sisko, whose leg has got to be tired, he came up about two inches short of kicking another one in the end zone. And uh, when you are a high school kicker and your team scores as fast as we do sometimes, it takes a little zip out of your leg. Yeah, it, that is right. Now, again, Morris will be back there, and he's got speed. Some of the up men have speed. Here's the kickoff. Up, up. And this one's going to come down at about the seven. Middle return on there. He gets through the first way, but Trent Carey holding on, bulldogging him down at about the 32-yard line, maybe the 33. And time has run out through three quarters of play. Jackson Christian, 48, Fayette Academy with seven. And we're going to watch the replay and then go to a timeout. And there's Carrier with the tag. Let's take that time out. We realize you have a busy lifestyle. And at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs, personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We are back to start the fourth quarter of play. It is 48-7. Jackson Christian with the lead. 
Fayette Academy with the football, first and 10. They're on 32, wide side of the field to their right where their bench is. That means that they are going right to left in this quarter. We've got some fresh jerseys up in there too. We'll try to pick those up for you. They send a man in motion, but they give to the fullback. And boy, I'm gonna tell you what now, uh, Connor Means can blast through there. He gets through the hole quick. I'll try to look at this right there, just right through him. Yep. A good run by them. It brings up second and five from the 37. Carlos Robertson wearing six. He's covering the big man, and Carlos is just a ninth grader. Blake rolling out here with him to give him some short help. Dustin Smith in there wearing 37. They send a man in motion to the left of the formation. They try to go back on the counter, and uh, we've got the counter for the counter. That's right. I believe on that it was Tristan Nash. Dustin Smith, and there was one other person, yeah. I believe. Tristan Nash wears 76. His brother is the guy known as Tacker Nash, but better known as Tackler Nash, the linebacker for Rhodes College, was a senior last year here. And uh, there are others. You, uh, see Potts out there, Andrew Potts. He wears number 20. Watch him. You got He's not the tallest guy in the world, but he makes things happen. We'll check some of these other. We got some other new ones out there. Third and Nine, ball on the 37, or actually it's back on the 34. This is Connor Bowling, and he can run and run quite well. Going to be pinned in on the sideline. And number two, Mason Vaughn, who has three interceptions this year, knocks him out of bounds, but he gets an all-important first down for Fayette Academy. And some bigger holes right there in the Jackson Christian defense, but uh, they're able – Good job by Vaughn, able to push him out on that one. Now I've got them unofficially with 11 first downs. Final and official stat from Greg Armour. First and 10 on the Jackson Christian 46-yard line. A lot of young people trips to the right of the formation. They're going to let Maine. Oh, good job by Bowling faking me out. Uh, two of our men did stay at home, but he still picks up about five, maybe six tough yards. Here comes a replay, Mitchell's replay. Joiner Joiner was in on it. Goff was in on it. Two men that uh, didn't get their jerseys. Brings up second and five, so it was just a five-yard gain. Ball at the Jackson Christian, 41. Wide side of the field to the left. Short side to the Vikings bench. They're checking their armbands. Looks like they're unbalanced or the power's to the left of the formation. Here's Bowling rolling out to his right. He's going to keep the football. He's got a first down and more. He's across the 30, down close to the 25-yard line for another first down. And Bowling proving why he is leading this team in both passing and rushing yards. You know, it's as a sophomore, it's scary to see when your quarterback has both over 500 passing yards and rushing yards in each category, Coach. Absolutely. Now, if they do – Happened to get this under 30. The clock would cease to run continuously. And we see Orr over here as a wing back. And they look like they're a little heavy left, but they run the end around, wing back around, whatever you want to call it, and get about five yards off of that. So picking up good yardage. And we Gary doing such a great job. He and Adrena with the replays. And that's a good play. One man had to slow him up. Then we finally got over there. I know that they'll work on getting there a little quicker. And this is some of our younger guys in there. I'll let you go ahead and give that score. And final from Harden Academy. USJ finishes the regular season 9-1 and one with a 56 to nothing win to close out the season against Harden Academy. And that's the only update we have as of right now. Nothing from Columbia or Nashville as of yet. We'll check those out in a minute. Here's the handoff. Bouncing it outside to the left. Getting decent yardage. I see Nash on it. Potts were kind of there slowing him up. But number one, and that is Elijah DeMoss. Uh, DeMoss playing uh, the one high safety right now. DeMoss, a good athlete, 11th grader, 6'1", 199. Can play quarterback, running back, wide out, and play safety. 
They're going back to the spread out of the wing T formation or double wing and bowling gives to Maines. Maines is going to take it to the house and he does from 17 yards out. That's right, and we're going to get a replay on this one, I believe. And yeah, it's just good blocking there by the Fayette Academy line, and good block at the end there by Pike, able to get Mays in the end zone. 17 yards for the touchdown. Pike should come on to attempt the extra point. Bowling will hold for him. Clock arrested at 647. 48-13, awaiting the extra point. Here's the snap. The kick is up. It's going to be a wobbler, but it still got through. So it is 48 to 14. We'll be back after this time out on the Worthy Road Studios Network. Buying a car is all about you. In person, over the phone, or online, we make it simple and easy. Our place is yours no matter where you live. LonnieCobbFord.com or Lonnie Cobb Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Home furnishings, appliances, bedding, and so much more. Kaufman's at the Bypass and Oil Well Road in Jackson. Furnishings for every room in your home. Custom upholstery options, too. And our fully stocked warehouse helps prevent supply chain delays. Kaufman's, for your life. We are back. Fayette Academy just scored. Do you think they're thinking onside kick? Surely not. But they could. Yeah. And, it, you know, it depends on what you're wanting to accomplish. I'm not going to question any coach trying to coach his team better and do what you think. This game has been brought to you by Great American Sports, the replay sponsor of Mitchell's Body Shop, Corner Logo Sponsors, Jackson State Community College, a great place to get an education, Dynamics Physical Therapy. They can do wonders for helping your athletic injuries. Joan Chevrolet, Blacksmith Restaurant with those great steaks. Scoreboard sponsor, Thompson & Smith Insurance. That's my insurance man. Let me tell you, they, Roger Smith especially has helped me out on several things. We'll tell you some more of these fine sponsors in a moment as they are ready to kick off, and it looks like an onside kick. No, it's a placed kick and fair catch call for, wise decision. And you're hoping your guy can run down and get it, and Austin Kelly did a good job. That's right. And like I said, USJ was up 56 nothing over Harden Academy. TCA still up at half, 28-7. to uh, Other than that, got a close game over – in Division One, and it's Huntington and Union City tied at 20 in the fourth quarter. I know somebody asked me a while ago, and Grant, if you are listening and you got a, a Nashville Christian score, Donaldson will take it because I don't think we've had an update up here. Sometimes Grant can get things that uh, the rest of us can't get as far as football scores and things like that. And for some reason I had – Austin Kelly in with the handoff, and it's going to get a couple of tough yards. Let's see who is running the football. It is. That looked like uh, Elijah DeMoss. DeMoss. Oh, uh, the, Elijah has a little, little bit of a hitch in his get along, meaning he had a little limp. I don't know. He, he hasn't played as many minutes as he normally does tonight. Carlos Roberson comes out this way. Vaughn is the slot. They're going to try to moss again. 50's got a hold of him for them, and he may get back to the line of scrimmage. We'll see. Dawson Bryan had the first hold on him. That's right. And I believe he got maybe a half yard on that one, if that, but that's going to be third down, Coach. Third and eight, a passing situation, although we've seen DeMoss make some really, really good runs. Ball is on our own 35, clock running at 4.56 and counting. Trips right. They show three down linemen. They're bringing up with two of their linebackers. Here's the pitch. Now watch DeMoss run, the 40. A little hesitation, the 45 across the 50. He didn't step out of bounds. He could go all the way. And you can count it, 65 yards check for flags, laundry, and anything else. None didn't step out of bounds. 65 yards, Elijah DeMoss. And I thought that was going to be the first punt drive of the night for the Eagles, but Elijah DeMoss said, I'm going to take this one to the house. Well, I'm sure Zach Cisco doesn't mind being lonely. He also handles the punting. And 65-yard uh, run for DeMoss. And that young man, I told you, he can break things open. 
He didn't look like he had a hitch in his get along then. Nah, I definitely didn't then. He turned on the Jets there, and again, Cisco on for the PAT. Austin Kelly, who was quarterbacking, holding. Kick is up. I saw the goalpost disappear. That means it's good. And the Eagles have taken a 55 to 14 lead in the fourth quarter with 4.06. Let's take a timeout. King Jewelers is not your typical run of the mill jewelry store. Grover is a certified jeweler with 35 years experience. This isn't just a jewelry store. It's an iconic symbol of love. How far would you go for love? King Jewelers, 16B, Conrad Drive, Jackson. And we are back here at a 55-14 lead. Uh, Fayette Academy had a good drive a while ago, but boy, did uh, Moss turn on the Jets on a big third down. And also, make sure you tell these people that you appreciate them bringing you Jackson Christian football for free, not ripping you off like the National Federation does at somewhere between 11 and 13 bucks, depending on the taxes. But Aloha Pools, Southeastern Termite and Pest Control, Elite Dental, McCoy's Heating and Air, Hub City Deli, Live Hydration and Spa, Lifeline Blood Services, Kaufman's Furniture, Arrington Funeral Home Directors, and here's the kickoff, and it's kicked and taken by number one for them, Levi there, a sophomore. I thought he was going to fair catch it at first. Yeah, that's right. And that was not what I was expecting there from Cisco, which from the looks of his uh, determination on that kick, I believe that's what he meant to do. So. Yes, he did. Uh, sometimes the coaching staff will tell him, and he has kicked a lot deep, and they may be trying to protect his leg. He could do it and would do it, but sometimes the directional kick, and that may give him a chance to play more uh, young people. That's right. And you got to remember, you got to play a game next week too, uh, regardless uh, and it's a playoff game, and if you lose, you're done. So That's right. 59 Pomeroy, I see him on the front line, along with 54 Seth Joyner. Here's the sweep by Morris, and this kid is quick now. Got to get him and hold him, and he gets his first down plus about two more, and there's a lot of action going out here on between Roberson and between Paxton Graves for them. Yeah, we've been seeing that a lot lately, off the ball contact. Uh, of course, we don't see it there, but it was just a good run there by Fayette Academy. And uh, I don't, uh, now, uh, Ronnie Carter, you say let the officials officiate, let the players play, and the coaches coach. But um, there's a nice run by Fayette Academy that's going to get about six maybe seven yards, Tristan and Nash coming back on the field. But I'm afraid one of the officials working this sideline probably, I won't say his comments are out of line, but he talked too long. And uh, Richard McWhorter, maybe you ought to pay attention. Second and four. Single coverage by Roberson out here. And they're back into the Double wing, and that time Morris get started like he got some yards. Somebody got a big old handful of jerseys, which is legal, and uh, coming out. 51 coming in for us is Landon Dean. 64 coming in, and you've got the roster with 64 on it because I've got the old. I want to make sure that young man gets credit. Yeah, that's right, 64 that is. I'll tell you, I don't have a 64. No, do you it. don't have one on yours. Uh oh We'll have to find one of those rosters. Now, that real skinny roster that I gave you would have it on it. This one right here, Coach. No, that's the that's, that's Fayette Academies. Here's the keep by bowling as he gets loose, scrambles, got good yardage. He's going to be tackled and brought down by 56. That's Hudson Neubauer. Okay, that was Andrew Martin a minute ago. Andrew Martin. Is that uh, 54? I mean, 64? 64, yes, sir. Yeah. And... That is the ball game. That was the last play. I remember it was a running clock, 55-14, your final score. Jackson Christian finishes second in this region. They will play the winner of the Columbia Academy and Franklin Grace game, but it looks like it's going to be Columbia Academy. We hadn't had an update. But had no update as of yet. And we'll check on that. We're going to take a timeout and come back with post-game festivities, a talk with Greg Armour, and we'll be back after this on the Worthy Road Studios. 
At Lonnie Kyle Ford, we now give you a warranty for life on the engine and transmission. That's right, a warranty for life at no cost to you. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage, but it's only at Lonnie Kyle Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. We offer live webcasting for families. It kind of came out of when so many warriors were going overseas to war. We have learned to offer families more choices that we want to serve our families well and serve our families better. At Arrington Funeral Directors, we accept all prearranged funerals. So you may have prearranged your funeral in this town, with another funeral home, or even in another state. But we accept all prearranged funerals because we're here to serve families. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Nissan and Carlock Prestige, the name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. The name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. King Jewelers is not your typical run-of-the-mill jewelry store. Grover is a certified jeweler with 35 years experience. This isn't just a jewelry store. It's an iconic symbol of love. How far would you go for love? King Jewelers 16B Conrad Drive, Jackson. on Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Hey, this is Chuck Walker with Southeastern Termite and Pest Control. If you live in West Tennessee, you have a need for the services we offer. We treat for all types of pests, including bed bugs, brown recluse spiders, and other hard-to-treat pests. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to encapsulate a crawl space. Give us a call to hear how to achieve the same thing and save thousands. Southeastern Termite and Pest Control can handle all of your termite and pest control needs, wood fungus and moisture barriers, real estate closing letters, and so much more. Southeastern, 731 660 at McCoy's Heating and Air, we realize there are more than enough things to worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. With our new 10-year all-inclusive package, your home comfort doesn't have to be one of them. For one low monthly payment, you can purchase a brand new York unit with full maintenance and repair coverage for 10 years with approved credit. No hassle, no stress, just complete coverage for your comfort and convenience. Contact McCoy's Heating and Air at 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com to schedule your free new AC estimate today. The news says Gen Z is struggling. I've got news for them. I wait tables. But last week, I built a field hospital. I put out a forest fire. I stopped a thousand attackers. And a natural disaster. I've saved lives. And led a team on patrol. I serve. While I go to school full time. While I work full time. The greater the challenge, the stronger we become. Looking for a new and exciting career? At Jackson State Community College, we offer nationally recognized, top-rated programs designed to greenlight your career for success. With courses available in the health sciences, nursing, computer technology, and much more, your next step towards a career starts here at Jackson State. Learn how Jackson State Community College can greenlight your future at greenlightyourfuture.com. Jewelers is not your typical run-of-the-mill jewelry store. Grover is a certified jeweler with 35 years experience. This isn't just a jewelry store. It's an iconic symbol of love. How far would you go for love? King Jewelers 16B Conrad Drive, Jackson. Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Nissan and Carlock Prestige, the name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Do you want your smile to say it all? 
At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. Great American Sports makes sports an addiction. Located at 125B Old Hickory Boulevard, East in Jackson, we specialize in teen sports for youth leagues, schools, and churches. We can embroider and screen print team uniforms. We also have sports equipment, Under Armour, and Adidas clothing, and anything else you need for your teen sports. You can email or call us for all your teen sports needs. Great American Sports, make sports an addiction. We are back here, the very happy final, 55-14. We take second place in the region. TCA will finish third, and Fayette Academy will make the playoffs and finish fourth. But the man that has all the right information, I'm going to tell you what, he's good. Greg Armour is here. Greg, your thoughts first, and then uh, you are ready to go on the stats. Well, we come out the second half and just did what we were supposed to do. We, we offensive-wise, you know, uh, defensive-wise, we let them score one touchdown, but, you know, we, we, we didn't break. We bent a little bit, didn't break. Uh, had but, a good goal line stance. Yes, had a good here. goal line stance, uh, you know, and then made, was able to put that into points. All right, let me get to the – Stats here. All right. Jackson Christian, first downs, 10 in the passing department. Gage Borkin, nine attempts, seven completions, 170 yards, and three TDs. Leading receivers, number 85, Daniel Green, two catches, 41 yards, two TDs. Jalen Mosley, two catches, 31 yards, one TD. Uh, Lance Rowland, one catch for 27 yards. Cam Boyd, one catch for 46 yards. Cooper Banky, one catch for 25 yards. In the rushing department, we rushed. Uh, I didn't have that. And sometimes yeah. we have to re add them and stuff. Cause folks, uh, these score books, I'm using small lines That's and had trouble. I'm going to go back to my big book. Greg's got a book that I couldn't write in it, but he can. He's got nice writing, too, in that book as he adds that up. Uh, we'll tell you Nashville Christian in the third quarter, and it may be later than that. They are leading in their ball game. They're going to win their region, which means they will be the number one seed in our side. They'll get a, they'll get a off week, and we would not get them if I'm correct until the third week. We just got to take care of business, win next week. Thirty-five seven is the score in that game, and of course USJ and TCA winning over there in Memphis, and probably wasn't. Any contest, anyway. Okay, I'm sorry for oh, that. Okay. We rushed the time ball 22 times for 293 yards. Leading rusher Cam Boyd had 15 rushes for 120 yards and one TD. Jalen Mosey had three carries for 79 yards and one TD. Wyatt Jones had one carry for three yards and one TD. Uh, Elijah DeMoss had three carries for 67 yards and one TD. We did not punt. We had two penalties for 15 yards. And Zach Cisco kicked off nine times and put it in the end zone five times. All right, for Fade Academy, they had 12 first downs. They attempted 15 passes, completing six for 37 yards. They rushed the ball uh, 43 times for 204 yards. Leading rusher was num the quarterback, number 10. And I don't have his exact numbers. Connor Bowling, well, that's, yes. uh, he did a great job. Fine young runner. He had probably 70, 70 yards, looks like what I got. And, uh, Greg, I've been asked to check something here. And I could be wrong because, like I said, writing with this. Okay, we know that Mosley scored at 643 in the first quarter. And I can't read whether I've got run or what on that one. And he scored with uh, for 19 yards. I know that, that was, one a, was pass. a pass. What about the, it looks like a 50-yarder. Was that a run or a pass? That was a run. That was a run. Okay. Right. Um, so he had a rushing TD and a passing TD. Okay. So he had one of both. Uh, yes. 
And then, of course, like you said, Daniel Green had the two catches. In, uh, uh, yes. And I, I'm going to bring my big book back next week. Can't read this small writing. And, uh, but that, that, those are some great stats. And um, they uh, don't know where to even start. I'm still thinking about that, holding them on the two-yard line. Because I, I just knew they were fixing to go in and gain a little momentum. And that would have really kept us from an opportunity to get the running clock. That's, and, that's correct. And uh, good we, job. We though. took the ball and, and marched, what, 98 yards. Yeah. Just off the top of your head, we know Mason Vaughn's got, what, three interceptions this year or four? And um, I don't have my stat Three, chart. three. I think it's three. Jack's got, what, three now? Mm -hmm. Jack's got three. Okay. Two good young men. One subs but comes in and plays. And, of course. Of course, Jack's, Jack's TD was uh, a touchdown. Yeah. It was uh, 60 yards. Great interception there. We've had, we had two in the ball game. Their their quarterback, I believe, yep. uh, through two. Trent Carrier had one. He returned it for 15 yards. Yeah, Trent getting better every week. And people forget he made his reputation last year on the kickoff team covering kicks. That's correct. Did a pretty good job of that. And uh, uh, now the funniest picture taken out there a minute ago. Our crowd is celebrating. I hope uh, y'all all saw that Daniel Green and Jack Collins were taking a picture next to each other. And there's what, almost uh, not quite a foot difference, but uh, yeah. it's pretty close to it. And uh, uh, kids are having a happy time. Senior night. Greg, any, any thoughts about senior night? I'm glad we honored the elementary, uh, younger elementary kids tonight. Yeah, and we got some young talent coming up, you know, and it's, a, it's good that we recognize these young kids and the efforts that they're putting forth, and they'll be the future Jackson Christian players. Absolutely on that. And uh, we know the cheerleaders are an integral part, and we've got a great band here, and I'll remind people that their band performance is going to be put on a separate YouTube thing with the games. Also, the uh, senior night festivities are there, and you'll get to see the kids come and be presented out there. Now, I don't know how much, if we got enough of it, but we did talk about it between the quarters. The uh, kindergarten, first grade, second, and third grade teams were all honored. And, folks, if you see them or their parents or the coaches, say something nice to them. It, it, it's, a, it's a great thing. And I've, I've come out here a couple of Saturdays. They have fun. Yes, that, they that's do. all you yes, say about it. And they learn a little football, that's too. That's right. That's and that's right. a good thing. Greg, probably, we haven't gotten it official, Columbia Academy, they, we know what we've got to face. They was ahead 14 to nothing okay. while I go in the start of the fourth. Franklin Grace has had trouble scoring with them. Now, Columbia, not a great scoring team because we were only down 10 to 7 and not playing our best football. And a lot of people forget this. We played that night without Jalen Mosley. That's correct. That's correct. And uh, it was 10-7. Lance Rowland made a great catch. Gage threw a great pass up there. Uh, our defense got righted, and we started hitting some people with authority. Now, the only thing I can say, and I'm trying to use my new word we introduced last week, we didn't mollyhawk anybody yeah. when we hit them, though. <laughs> and uh, we got to start doing, doing that with teams like that, and they've got a great running quarterback, and they also have a punishing tailback or single running back that uh, the young man's name escapes me, but um, – these two teams, we've got a little history. Formerly, one of our assistant coaches used to be the head coach up there, and um, two fine schools that are affiliated with the Church of Christ. So uh, it's going to be a slobber knocker next week. Yep, it's it's going to be a good game. Tell you what, Greg, final statement tonight, and then we're going to take a timeout. Then Michael's going to fill in as much playoff scores and things, and we're going to wrap this good content. But your turn. We just uh, we just took care of the ball and um, no turnovers, and um, we just got to uh, get ready, have a good practice this coming week, and get ready. For, you know, it's uh, we enter this now at uh, O and O, and we have to hit one game at a time. Yeah, and uh, Gage. Tonight, I, I, I got to bring that back up before you go. Great performance. Missed yeah. two passes is all he missed on, and two those passes. weren't bad misses. There no. were reasons for those to have missed and stuff, and three touchdown passes. Yep. And uh, anyway, it, it was a great performance, and he's gotten, like I said, we both talked about this for since the USJ game, he has gotten better and better steadily. That's correct. And yes. 
I wished I had his cannon for arm. You know what he's calling basketball, don't you? The rifleman. Yeah. <laughs> and he could do that. That's Greg Armour. We appreciate Greg, and we are the only station that can say that they've got the greatest statistician, and he comes half and at the end of games unless there's just some extenuating circumstance. Greg, I'm looking forward to seeing you next week, and hopefully we yes. can see you about the next three or four weeks that's, in a row. Yes, that's correct. Let's take one more time out, and we'll come back. Michael Molnix will help wrap this up, and we'll be back with you after these timeouts. Thompson & Smith, the area's premier independent insurance brokerage, has been serving families and businesses in the region through its founding companies since 1927. With their many insurance company partners, Thompson & Smith provides insurance products for family, home and auto, contractors, retailers, restaurants, manufacturers, medical and dental clinics as well as any other business or organization seeking quality coverage, risk management expertise and customer-focused service. Call them today to discuss your insurance needs. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. He shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. Oh. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Exciting 55-14 game over Fayette Academy, but I'm going to throw it immediately to Michael Mullenix, who has important information for all you Jackson Christian fans. Well, Eagles fans, one thing that you know next week, you will be at home, but you now know who you're playing. Next week, you will be hosting the Columbia Academy Bulldogs, who just come up, came off a 14 to nothing win over the Grace Christian, I believe Eagles is their name, if I'm not mistaken. I believe Grace Christian is the Eagles. You know, there's a couple of those uh, Grace Christian teams across the state. There's one up towards Knoxville, and there, I think there's three of them in this. I believe one in Chattanooga, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. But – Regardless, Jackson Christian, you'll be, pay, you'll be playing Columbia Academy here at home next week. And then if you win that one, you also have another home game. Uh, it says TWSWA put on here, if the number two West team and number two East teams meet in the quarterfinals, the number two West team will host. So the yes. number two West team is your Jackson Christian Eagles. So they will be, they will be playing uh, at home possibly the next two weeks. And there is a strange scenario that if Jackson, I mean Jackson Christian – Nashville Christian were to get beat before they come here, we could possibly, and like I said, fans don't get too excited about that uh, because it's a long stretch, and that doesn't mean Nashville Christian is unbeatable. It's just the opponents they're going to get are beatable. That's right. And uh, we could, and uh, we enjoy playing Nashville Christian. We can do that, uh, but we got to win the first round. We got to win the second round to get to the third round, and that's when we would meet Nashville Christian. That is right. And other other than that, you have Trinity Christian uh, with this win for JCS tonight. They Trinity Christian has locked up the number three seed, and they will be playing host to the Kings Academy out of East Tennessee next week. And other than that, Clarksville Academy still waits for their opponent. USJ uh, will have a bye into uh, the quarterfinals, as well as Friendship Christian will, who ended up winning – uh, the East last night. Tipton Rosemark, uh, there's only there's five teams that can make it from the West. Tipton Rosemark being the fifth team out of the West to make it, and they will be traveling all the way to Murfreesboro next week to play the Cougars out of Middle Tennessee Christian. Not an enviable task either. Uh, the Cougars of Middle Tennessee Christian, pretty good school. That's right, and they only lost to Friendship Christian by 14, but what, from what I was reading on an article on that game, it was close up there until the final uh, till the final drive for Friendship Christian. So, uh, MCCS, it might be a might might be a task, and that might be a second round opponent there for the uh, Eagles here at Jackson Christian. Uh, but other than that, uh, not a lot of more finals for you uh, to this point. Uh, Division one, of course, you got Peabody 33-13 over West Carroll. Union City still tied with Huntington 20-20. South Gibson just knocked off Crockett 42 to 14. Haywood, uh, we had a question about that game earlier. They have just won 48-13. Milan over Northside, 42-0. Westview, 61-0 over Houston County. Lake County, 54-6 over Greenfield. Dyersburg, 35-0 over Ripley. Uh, you still got Covington, 49-0 over, over uh, Bolton. Camden, 28-8 over Gibson County in the fourth quarter, and that is for a final spot in the playoffs. 
Uh, other than that, I'm not seeing any more besides McKenzie McEwen, 31 nothing for the Rebels. And then Chester County was able to knock off Liberty, 56-12. And I believe that might be it. Other, Well, other than this game, Lexington, 41 nothing over Jackson Southside. And I think I might be done after that one. <laughs> you may be done. I am kind of done. I know one thing. I apologize. I will never bring my small scoring sheets again. But if you saw how much paper we had up here tonight, you wouldn't be uh, begrudge me that. And, again, a great night for the seniors, a great night for the elementary kids that play in our league, flag tag league here. And um, uh, I've been texting, trying to get things straightened out. Let me know if that 50-yarder was the one where I talked about Jalen doing the hula girl dance or the hula dance and putting all the moves and stuff like that on. And uh, – the um, and that was the uh, let's see Mosley fifty yards. I had him at six forty three, and the nineteen yarder was at four twenty four. So uh, that's something, and uh, we'll take a look at that. And guess what? Taking a look at it, this game is going to be archived on YouTube tonight. Probably won't be able to see it till in the morning, but it will be archived on there. The band performance will be archived on there. Also. Um, I'm not sure if we got the little cheerleaders and stuff. Check it out because Worthy Road Studios and Jackson Christian bring you as much as we can, try to honor the kids and do a good job with that. 55-14, your final score. And, of course, we've got some great sponsors. Please go by and tell them you appreciate them, patronize them, uh, buy their products or whatever if they've got a service rather than products. But very quickly, pregame and postgame is brought to you by Great American Sports. The replays tonight were uh, by Mitchell's Bodies Replay. And, of course, Adrena and Gary did a great job back there. Corner Logo sponsors, Jackson State Community College, Dynamics Physical Therapy, Jones Chevrolet, Blacksmith Restaurant, Scoreboard Sponsor itself, um, Thompson & Smith Insurance. Of course, you've got Lifestyle Vision. You've got Snookums Restaurant. You've got Nest Realty, Lonnie Cobb, King Jewelers, Bank of Jackson, Arrington Funeral Home Directors, Kaufman's Furniture, and remember Paul Kaufman's name's on the old gym over here. He helped start this school. Arrington Funeral Home Directors, I think I mentioned them once, Lifeline Blood Services, Live Hydration and Spa, McCoy's Heating and Air, Hub City Deli will be there Tuesday night for the Jackson Christian Eagles show, Elite Dental, Southeastern Termite and Pest Control, and Aloha Pools. Now, it is just about time. Any final word, Michael, before I sign us off? Great great passing by Gage Boykin. Great rushing by Cam Boyd. Great catching there by Mosley. Overall, great night for the Eagles. Let's do it in the playoffs. Go back and watch the little things on the replay, like holding them on fourth and two. Go back and watch Cam Boyd catching a pass out of the backfield with very little time left. And I'm not sure we had a half tick. I'm not going to fuss with the officials too much. We were winning, but let's be consistent all across the state. And uh, some little plays. Watch those guards pull. Watch the tackles have to hold their block. I didn't say hold, but there are little things. There's defensive things that were good. We shot the gap sometimes. We plugged the holes. There's some things we have to work on, but go back and appreciate these kids and coaches for the little things they do. Now, we uh, need to point out that this is a copyright broadcast. And also, that means you can't use it, folks. You can watch it on YouTube, but you cannot copy it or do anything. As a matter of fact, I, before we go to the uh, uh, and get out of here, I want to thank, first of all, both schools, Michael Hodum and the staff at Fate Academy for helping so much. And y'all don't know, we had trouble getting a uh, roster to open up, and it's a fun thing, and they did a lot to help that. The administration and Booster Club president, Shane Sisko, and all the other, Jason uh, Shelton, what a great guy. The coaching staff of both schools and the administrators. And here we've got a a great staff of people. Adrena Hicks was on your replay. Gary, producer, director, all-around good guy. Paul Schultze, who is executive producer of all the Worthy Road Studios. And, of course, Vincent Lockhart upstairs. Good to see him back. He was with us in the initial year of doing a lot of this stuff, and he hasn't lost the touch yet. Michael Mullenix filling in for Dave Wade, and we appreciate him. Of course, I miss Michael. 
he and I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it, Michael, you and I together did a great job for Freed Hardeman. They're using a little different setup right now, but that's okay. And I, it's good to get to work with him again. Who knows, he may show up for a baseball game sometime. But we thank everybody. And remember, any rebroadcast, retransmission, editing, or further use of this contest without the express written consent of Worthy Road Studios is prohibited. And now it is time to say thanks for your time, this time, till next time. Good night, all.